Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good wherever you are in the world, or as they say in Poland, Jane Dobry. Welcome to the second day of the European Tekken World Tour Masters event, Fighting Games Challenge. I'm Will Van Bill, you can call me Will, Willie or Will Van. I'm here with the legendary Mark Man. Mark Man, what's up? What's going on? I'm very happy to be here. And like you mentioned, we are going to see some of the best international talent going at it here, oh, trying yeah. to figure out who's going to be the champion of our very first Master event here in the Tekken World Tour in Europe. So I'm very excited to see how it's going to go. Any predictions on what we're going to see in the matchups? Any favorites for you? Well, I, I personally like to see all of the European players do very well. I'm also very curious about Joey Fury, the sole American representative at this tournament, and of course all the Koreans are here as well. And as Spaghetti Rip already mentioned, all of the matches are international matches. So it's going to be a really big surprise for me for to see who's going to make it out in the winners. I think it'll be very interesting. You know, I think the winner side of the bracket obviously is going to be very exciting. But I think what the real test is going to be is what's going to happen in the loser's bracket. Oh, because yeah. obviously yeah. all the Koreans right now, they are in the winner side of the bracket. So I think the loser side is going to be a bit more interesting to see who's going to be coming out into the top eight from that part of the bracket. Now there's... There's obviously potential for anyone to win. It's not just because you're a Korean player doesn't mean you're going to be guaranteed top eight. Absolutely. There is going to be some matches and there's going to be some bloodshed. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Of course, we are getting ready for our first matchup of our top 32. But before I do, if anyone is here, if they have access to social media, jump on there, let people know about the stream. And also, wish a very happy birthday to our fearless leader, Mr. Kastuhiro Harada. It's his birthday today. Oh, it's his birthday today. It is. So if you're watching Harada-san, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Harada-san. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get ready for the matchup here. First match is going to be between uh, Love Need from India and Ireland's best player, Uyu Fergus. Yeah, this should be fine. So I'm thinking we're going to see Jack versus Asuka. That's probably yeah, the matchup that we're expecting. That's the, that's the most probable. Um, I think uh, Love Need plays a really solid Jack. He's proven himself uh, a couple of times before. He's been in Koreans, and this is his first time that he's in a European event, and I would like to see how he... Uh, how, how, he, how we will play against uh, Europeans. I, I think the first time we really saw Love Need explode on the scene is when he was at the Tiger Uppercut event, a challenger event in, yes. in Asia. He was able to beat our reigning world champion, uh, UIU's Kudan. Yes. Now going up against his UIU teammate, Fergus. Let's see how he's going to do in this matchup. All right. Start off with a front front one. You know, Jack, a real solid character. Uh, good pokes. Uh, yeah, plant the seats. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, Jack is one of those characters. I mean, he is such a hard-hitting character. Mm -hmm. An amazing tournament character. A lot of people say that he's probably one of the best tournament characters there is. But he does have his disadvantages. One of them being is that he doesn't have the ability to move as freely as other characters because of him being such a huge target. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what, what I also noticed is that there aren't a lot of Jack players here in the tournament. Love Need is, I think, one of the only ones together with Circa Joey Fury. Oh, there's a re nice Rage Drive. Yeah, I would say two Jack players is enough. But, you know, <laughs> it, obviously, there's uh, it, uh, we, we don't have... Uh, Probably one of the best and most story Jack players in Echo Fox Saint. Yeah, He's not same. here at the event. But there is some Jack representation nonetheless. Yes, oh, nice. Are. Gets a counter hit. Looking to get the follow-up. And, you know, I think one of Jack's strengths we were talking about earlier, the ability, you know, just the ability to play very simple and very safe. And yeah. that's, I think, where Jack shines. Obviously, a lot of his stuff is punishable. But for the most part, he can play very dry and very, very calculated if he needs to. Yeah, he can play very compact. But Fergus here making a comeback. Very nice round for him. You know, Asuka, on the other hand, is not a quite... He doesn't get picked a lot. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, why do you think that is? You know, uh, I just feel like, you know, a lot of characters can probably do what she does. You know, that's not to say she's not an amazing character. She yeah. obviously can deal damage. She has the ability to mix up. And she has some interesting uh, counter hit setups and baits. Yeah. So I just think that she's probably just not as popular or as, as appealing as some of the other characters in the roster. You know, we see a lot. There's a characters that we see a lot of. And it's going to be Kazumi and Dragunov. Mm -hmm. And I think the longer we go on towards the Tekken World Tour, we're going to see less of Dragunov, less of Kazumi. And we're going to see people branching out. Obviously, those are the characters that are probably study the most nowadays. Yeah, exactly. Along with Jack. Along with Jack. This, this top 32, the characters, they're also quite in the verse, so... Oh, that was an important down forward two here, and now he's pushing the other way. Because he has rage, he's going to be opting to do more damage here, as both players have access to rage oh, drive now. See, that's it. He likes to use the back three at the end of the round, but oh! And the 1-1 one, one swing. Yeah, the 1-1 one, one swing is able to, you know, he wasn't yeah. patient enough. He tried moving the second time around. And Fergus, you know, holding it down right now, up two rounds to one. Yeah. If you guys are tuning in right now, you might not be too familiar with Tekken. Tekken is one of those games where it's very fairly balanced. Pretty much any character can compete in tournament play. And we've seen that throughout the entire week, and we see almost every single character played. All, could, all, turn, all characters are tournament viable, as you can see here. Yeah, some more than others, but I mean, everyone can still do some damage. Mm -hmm, that's right. All right, went for the windmill punches, not that's opting to go for the extension. Doesn't look too good for uh, Fergus, but he's trying to make a comeback. It's making up. He's still got rage. He's got an amazing rage drive. Oh, and the down for 1-1. One, one. 
Yeah, you know, especially in this matchup, I would never count on Asuka. She has amazing tools with yes. moves like that backwards flip that she has, that back three. Back three. It's so good. It beats a lot of Jack's uh, good poke options. And if he tries to get greedy with the down back one or the from crouch down back one, any of those low shotgun attacks, uh, he's going to get launched for it. So he's going to have to be careful. It has such an active hurt box when it sits out there as well. Yeah. Oh, Asuka nice. also has a really good uh, low pokes. Very hard hitting. Oh, then a one plus two. Here we go. To the wall. Yeah, he's going to get the wall here. Oh, We're going to see oh, damage. three ring circus follow up. He gets the pick up on the knee. But again, Lovneed has rage now. He's going to have to be very careful. Fergus doesn't want to get hit by the rage arc. Oh, so or the rage drive. Even in life, Asuka still got rage. Planting, Planting the seed so oh. risky too. Because that uh -oh. seed planter, it has to hit. If it doesn't hit, you are dead. But man, that paid off in a big way. And Lovneed is up 1-0 right now versus Fergus. Wow. And again, Throughout the tournament, it's going to be a race to two matches, two out of three, until we get to our winners' finals, our grand finals, and of course the losers' finals. Those matches will be an extended set of three out of five. But right now, we're going to the Devil's Pit, continuing this action, and we'll see, of course, how this is going to play out. You know, this stage is one of those stages, once we get to the potential final stage, it's going to go to a wide open area where there are no walls. And that could either prove to be an advantage or disadvantage, depending on the player. I would say more so on the player than the character, because it all comes down to movement and spacing at the end. Anyways, right now with the advantage, Loveneat looking to close it out here and, of course, move on in the bracket. But I don't think Fergus is going to go down easily. That was no. a tight match. It went down to the final round. Final round, final round. That means they're, they're quite evenly matched. Yeah. There's, there's so wow. much you can infer and kind of get from an opening matchup. Yeah. It really sets the tone here. But, wow, he just opened up with a power crush there. Mm -hmm. And something that we don't often see from Jack is he very rarely goes for that power crush. Obviously, you don't want to really duck against Jack unless no. you're feeling the threat of the lows. But uh, that power crush is, is a high, so you're going to have to be careful. Yeah, the power crush is really good at the wall because he can wall spats and leads for decent damage or Oki if you want. Yeah, Jack can definitely bring the damage when he's at the wall. Wow. But what a great round there. Opening here in match number two. And Fergus. Opening with Can Cans. Yeah, Can Cans. Such a great move. Able to crush almost instantly. Yeah. Not just that, he has the counter hit ability as well. So if he flinched at all, it would have hit. Wow, low scissors into the seed planter. That can can just did 50% of damage. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it, it works. It hurts pretty much. And that, oh, what a great punish there off the down forward, too. That 2 3 with oh. its nice range and an up forward 3 to end it there. Fergus looking really good. And it's like he didn't even lose that first match. Now, two rounds straight here. We're in the open part of the bottom stage. You can backdash freely, no walls, no no pressure at the walls. So okay, good block there. You know, one of those things that you see often from Oscar players, they go for that Tooth Fairy cancel into the front crouch down forward too, which we just saw. So now Fergus opting and starting to mix it up. Oh, nice patience. Oh, no didn't got the whiff punish. Yeah, you got to be careful because that, that, that very fast and, and hard-hitting punish there uh, from uh, Oscar, that big Tooth Fairy attack, is launch punishable. So yeah, Love you could have easily got. Oh, oh there man. we go. Three rounds straight for yeah. Fergus. Speaking of easy, that looked really easy for him that second uh, matchup. So now we're all tied up here. Yeah. And one that of these players will move on in the winners bracket. But which one will it be? Who do you think is gonna win? I gotta I ask know. the crowd. I mean, if you if you guys like Fergus, give him give it up. Make some noise. All right. How about Love Need? No, right, I'll cheer no, for Love okay. Need. I'll cheer for Love Whoa. Need. I'll cheer for him as well. Yeah. He's a really friendly guy. I was with him uh, yesterday at the airport. No, two days ago, I'm sorry, at the airport. Uh, really uh, talkative. Uh, he likes to play Tekken. He really loves Tekken. You yeah. know, he I think travel. everyone here probably really likes Tekken, <laughs> which is a great thing, of course. But man, we are here in an infinite stage. We're in the infinite Azure. There are going to be no walls here. So it's going to really yeah. come down to, of course, how these guys are going to play out yeah. the matchup. The movement, the spacing, it all has to be real correct. Oh, they trade hits at the first. You know, one of the things we saw in that last matchup is, you know, Love Need got hit by a lot of counter hits. We saw the counter hit up forward three. Yeah. Uh, we saw a lot of it. And, you know, it, the counter, it, uh, the it kind of, you know, it kind of flustered him a bit because he started throwing out the down forward twos and he was just getting punished for almost everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh big down forward two. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah. And he's going to do a lot of damage here. Not enough to close it out there. But still opting for another opportunity. Uh oh. It's going to be real hard for Fergus to make the comeback. Oh, oh. and he interrupts the, uh, the front two. Yeah, and that's the first time we've seen the wall standing 2 1 string there from mm -hmm. Love Need. So starting to, you know, use a little bit more of the repertoire. And I like the that's scissor an there. That's an excellent whiff punish. Yeah. yeah. It has a lot of good range. Yeah. But nice combo to start it off here. Again with the seed planter. He likes he, that move. Yeah, he's not afraid to do it. No. There's a jackhammer. And you know, I feel like we haven't seen the jackhammer too much in the matchup, and I think it's going to be a great move because. And as you said, you got to <laughs> test somebody. You have to really test whether or not they're going to start wow. sidestepping. But man, wow. why sidestep when you have back three, right? Back three is such a good move. But as you said, it's launch punishable. It's kind of a risk that he takes. You know, not everyone can punish it in time, though. It has this really weird punish window where you're going to yeah. have to be very patient. Yeah. And if you try to do it too early, sometimes you get hit. Wow. But man, great stuff. Fergus is loving it. 
And that's a great crowd shot here. You guys can see a lot of the top players in the front row. Oh, he didn't get the 2-1 punish. No, he didn't. Okay, oh, try oh. oh. Interesting. Okay. And again, using the jackhammer to his advantage. Mm -hmm. It has not yet been sidestepped or launched here yet from Fergus, but I mean, I'm, you got to think it's got to be on his mind. But the problem is, once you start trying to sidestep the, the jackhammer, it really opens up everything else for Jack. The down forward two, the dashing down back ones. We're going to see a lot of that and a lot of the mix-ups, of course. Oh, man, he went for a punish there. Yeah. Oh. That was kind of dangerous of him to do that. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful wave punish. Threading the needle there with the tooth fairy. And he oh, misses he the combo. It, and it's a normal throw. throw. That's a bit unfortunate. Oh, Look, his hands are God. up. He's in disgust. He's like, well, how did I how did I get hit by that? But right now, Love Need one round away from moving on in the bracket. And again, this is top 32 winner's side. Here we go. No duck on that screen. Oh, he got him ducking. Oh, the drop. <laughs> the drop. You missed it. I missed it. Yeah. I'm sorry. We didn't even do it yesterday. Yeah, you got to be careful, man. Wow. Tasty Steve is always watching. He's wow. always ready for that drop. All right. All right, nice punish there on the down four, too. Fergus looking much better in this round. Yes. And there's the him. back three. Look at that. And, you know, he just went for a poke. He went for an honest from crouch down back one. And it, it, he got he got punished hard for that. Yeah, that was solid intuition of him to use the back three. Yeah, sometimes you just got to throw it out and hope for the best. Especially in close quarters combat, that's really where that move excels. It's a real good, it's a real good comeback tool, but like oh, that. Oh man, he got him that time. Love yeah. Need looking really good. He's gonna opt to keep him out of rage. Going for the mix up, one oh, plus two throw, yeah. not broken. He's gonna have to be careful here. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh he that's gonna be punished. punished. He thought he had the two fairy, yeah. and that's gonna be it. Love Need is taking it. He's gonna move on in the bracket. Fergus now going into the loser's bracket where it's going to be tough. But I think right now, without the, the Korean players, it's going to be a little bit easier for him to travel through. Yeah, so we'll true. see him later on, I'm sure. But it's not going to be easy. You know, even no. if you go to the losers, you still got a shot. But you got to work harder because if you then lose, you're out of the tournament. Yeah. Anyways, he still has another chance. But of course, we're going to go ahead and continue with our winner's side of our top 32 bracket. Let's see what match we're going to have up next. All right, we have a few of the players jumping on stage. It oh, looks we like have we have Korean. Kokoma. And District G, the Phantom. The Phantom, eh? The Phantom. So He's the only one. It's going to be Master Raven versus... I don't know who Kokomo's going to pick. You know, we saw him pick Geese yesterday. Geese, Kazumi, But we know Dragunov. he can use Kazumi, Dragonov, a number of characters. But I yes. wonder which one he's going to pick in this particular matchup. I would like to see him play Geese again. I think Geese would be a good choice. It's a great way to test if players know how to fight against them. Mm -hmm. And we I think Geese has a, 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 an answer for a lot of the options that Master Raven has. I also think that Geese is not used a lot in the tournaments. Yeah, definitely not. I mean... Uh, it's a risk. User? It's a risk. I mean, if you're going to use one of the newer characters, you risk not knowing a certain matchup or having oh, yeah, to execute in a, a certain matchup. And having to rely on your offense is really, I think, what the problem is going to be. But if you can get that experience and you can have it pay off in tournament play, I say, why not? Because you never know. What if your opponent doesn't know how to fight against yeah. Geese, Mr. Howard? Yeah, if you don't know the match matchup, it's easier for you to fall for the mind games and, and, and rush down. So you have to turtle a bit. And if that doesn't work out, you'll be in the defensive and you don't know what to do. It's going to be harder to go into your opponent and do damage by pokes or, or by, by big counter hit launchers. Yeah, and I think uh, Kokomo right now, on, on the Tekken World Tour standings, he is definitely, I believe, in our top five points-wise. Yeah. So he's looking, of course, to extend that lead and maybe get uh, a bit higher on the points board. We'll see how he's going to do in this tournament, but he's going to have to go through the Phantom. The Phantom. District G, the Phantom. An eccentric guy. Loves his victory poses. Really good uh, Master Raven player. Why, why is... Uh, Victory pose is eccentric. I think it's really cool. It's really cool, but <laughs> it's, yeah, cool. That means cool. I got you. I mean, I meant cool, but you know, uh, it's kind of hard. Depends but on, I guess, the viewer at home. But anyways, we're gonna <laughs> see Korea versus the United Kingdom, and we're gonna settle this score here in the winners bracket, top yes. 32. You know, Master, Master Raven with the teleportation. He, the Phantom really knows how to use the teleportation and the parry. He actually uses a lot of Master yeah. Raven's tools that we probably yes. don't normally see in a matchup. I mean, I think this character in itself is something that we rarely see on the Tekken World Tour. So seeing another Master Raven player, the last time we saw, I guess, Master Raven was at Combo Breaker where we saw Go Attack using that character. It's very rare. But there is actually another Master Raven player here in the oh, tournament. Yeah. In the loser's bracket, we have Tishumon uh, representing Italy. And that's, of course, something I'm looking forward to seeing in the loser's bracket later on. I saw him earlier this morning. He looked fresh. He was ready for he it. He finally slept after he three slept. years. He slept. He slept. Yeah, so. I think he's prepared, but he's in the loser's bracket. Oh, yeah. He lost to a Polish player uh, yesterday. Yeah. Uncool. Uncool. But then he, he fought him again in the loser's finals and then he won. Oh, he was able to beat his demon. Beat his demon, yeah. All right, exactly. here we go. We're going to get ready for this matchup. 
And uh, who do you think is going to take it? Well, it depends on which character is going to be used for Kokomo. That's what I think what's going to kind of decide it. At least yeah. I can make a better uh, analysis based off of that. But mm -hmm. uh, who do you think he's going to pick? I, I would I like to see Geese, but I think he's going to probably go with Kazumi. I was, I'm agree, I agree with you, but I think he's going to pick uh, Kazumi because of the down for one. Yeah. Down for one is such a good poke. It's a great poke to kind of yeah. keep Master Raven's BS away. <laughs> keep her from, from going into the options. Yeah. That's what I think is we're going to see, but I, like I'm saying, I'd like to see Geese. Mm -hmm. There are not a lot of P, uh, characters in the game that have the sh same shenanigans as Master Raven. No. Oh, she's definitely hovering over Kazumi. Oh, we never meant that was the other oh. side. Oh, got a big dragon, huh? Oh, we'll see. He doesn't know. If you look at his face, he's, 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 he's thinking about it. He's, he's pondering. He's definitely thinking. Yeah. Geese? Maybe Geese? No, I don't think geese? so. I think he's going to stick to Kazumi. It looks like he's uh, he's made his decision here. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's playing with our emotions. Don't do that to us, Kokomo. Dragonoff, Geese, or Kazumi. Which of the three will I it be? I think he's, he's going to bet it on trying to test geese. if he knows how to fight against Geese. I'd like to see this. Dang. Oh, wow. He toyed with our emotions hard body. And not just that, we're going to get a Wallace stage here with the Infinite Azure. They're discussing the matchup in the crowd right now. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Thumbs up or thumbs down on the on the pick for Geese? Yeah? Good, no? bad, no. All right, All right we, we got, got a response. few thumbs up. Uh, thumbs oh, we thumbs up from down. Spaghetti. All right. <laughs> uh. All right, this is going to obviously be a test. We're going to see if Kokoma is able to pull out into the lead here. Of course, this is a race to two. Come Anything on. here happened in the first or two. This might you know? be amusing. But it's still winner's side. Loser still got a shot in the loser bracket. All right, here we go. From the UK, District G, the Phantom versus South Korea's Kokomo. Let's go. Here we go. Excellent sidestep. Yeah, and that's one of the things. The forward one plus two there mm -hmm. from Geese is, uh, it's a great move. It's safe, but it doesn't it's have linear. the best tracking. It yeah. doesn't have the best tracking at all. I think that's with a lot of Geese's attacks is he doesn't have the best tracking overall. But he does still have some tools to keep his opponents from stepping. Yeah. The things he can do with meter and max cancels. Yeah, and you know, he's lucky here because he doesn't have to deal in a wall state. With oh. walls, Geese is so scary. Oh, really? Why is that? Because he could do so much more damage and he can actually keep you locked down if you can't move. Yes. So this is of a benefit for uh, Phantom? I feel like it is. Yeah. But obviously Master Raven excels with damage at the walls and he's not going to have that in this matchup. But at oh, least yeah. he can play in a much more open and honest game. Yeah. Round two. Oh, it's more about spacing your movements. All right. Nice. He went for that there. Now we're going to see, the, oh, nice back two there from Pokemon. Oh, he was excellent. trying to get something. He's so good at, u u at utilizing that move. So good. Yeah, let's see what kind of mix-up he's going to go for here. He goes for the running tackle. Get off me. The confirmation, no. Oh, oh he goes for the low. He, oh, he missed the combo. He, he was too it. far. Wow. And Fat District G, the Phantom here, having another opportunity for a combo mix-up. Let's see what he does this time. This oh, time goes, goes for, for the mid. Mid-cancel. Mid oh, wow. Tied up on rounds. He's feeling it. He looks to the crowd with affirmation. Which oh, kind of did you see that? Wow. The Phantom is really feeling himself. Nice again, having another opportunity. What makes up? Goes low this time. Has an opportunity. There's a screw. Oh, it he caught him. He tried to catch him with that rollback. It seems like Kuma isn't familiar with the Master Raven matchup. Or would you? Maybe would with you Geese, so? yeah. Definitely with yeah. Geese, probably not as familiar, but. He still has another chance oh, going the other wow. way. This time, evading the mix-up there with the use of the meter. And look at him. He's definitely feeling himself. Yeah. Fight. Brushing it off like this was not a problem at all. But this but time, a forward one plus two hits. And the beat's going to drop. You ready for it? Boom. All right, this time, punishing there with the one one two. Went for the one plus two follow-up into the instant running one. And right now, Kokomo looking really good here in the fourth round. Oh, oh a bit too far. Again, trying to keep that pressure with the running one, and I think that's going to be a great tool in this yeah. matchup. It's going to oh. be real hard for my Phantom. This is oh. the scary part, because yeah. Pokemon now having two bars here, he's going to have the ability to do extra damage, whether he's doing the final Repukin or he's going to do the Raging Storm. It depends on what he's going to go for. But I think uh, Ra Raging Storm here in a stage with no walls is probably less intuitive, less wow. less used. I don't think it's going to be used that a lot in an open stage. Oh, but there we go, back turn combo into the screw. Going for damage, no oh. Oki. Why did he stop there? I don't know why he stopped there. It was very interesting. I mean, obviously he could have gotten more damage out of it. Yeah. Oh. Let's see whether the Phantom is able to pull something out here. Oh, the parry. Oh, wow, the wow. other way. Nice duck, good yeah. punish. This time getting a big punish. And you know, that's a big risk, a risk from Geese there. Yeah. Misses the follow up there. Nice block, bad punish. There we go, float out of the air into the screw. 
And Dax is going to have to be careful again because he's having the ability to cancel the back three. Oh, he could have done it there. But he missed it. Oh, this gets the grab. No this might be it. One mix up. One thing you do is. Oh, has an go. opportunity. Max mode. Oh, great patience there from the Phantom. No time Going left. Back. Gonna have to do something. Jump back. Oh, Coke no. Is that gonna hit? One it does. Minutes. And look at that oh. Kokoma waving around and popping <laughs> off. It doesn't kill, though, but it's there's no time dead. left. He's not dead. Oh, time. oh, my God. That was a sick ender. That was, that was pretty clutch. And he, wow. because he got the float in the air, the presence of mind to, to pull out the Rage Art and capitalize. Man, that was some good stuff from Kokoma. Yeah, that was some good ass taking. But because of that, he's stuck with Geese, and the Phantom is going to have another opportunity here. But what what stage are we going to get? That's the question. The Not Kinder the Gym. The, that's, that's the first time I've seen it on the tournament. Oh, man. All right, here we go. So we do have walls in play. Both of these players are going to be much more of a threat with their characters. I think it's very important to watch out for how Geese's meter is going to build up in the matchup because it's going to give him access. And, you know, we saw him li quite liberally use the Geese uh, back 3-2 cancel. Yeah. He didn't really get it too much in combos for damage, but he was able to at least this make it safe and continue to mix up. I want to see him kind of maybe test him with the back 3 to see, to see if there's even a punish. Maybe a wild stage can make the big difference. Oh, I think it will. I think it will. Both of these characters have amazing wall carry. Yeah. I think it's not going to be a problem for them to start mauling by the wall. And I think that's where the pressure signs for both of these characters, especially Geese. Geese has a lot of options that uh, will cause for the spin uh, stun, and yeah. which will do the wall stun as well. Okay. I think Master Raven's just wall damage in general is just really good. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Also got good Oki setups if you just stop midway in the attacks. Yeah, Kokomo really starting to annoy with that down two, that quick low uh, chop. Mm -hmm. Here's a follow-up here. He's not going to be able to kill, but he's going to have another mix-up afterwards. Yeah. What oh. they can do? Oh, in the shoulder tackle. Oh. Interesting that he got hit by that. I mean, that, again, it's not unblockable here, but he tried to do something, and the power crush didn't even initiate. Maybe, Maybe he tried, tried to sidestep, I think. So I think he went for a sidestep. Mm -hmm. Here's a follow-up here. He's going to push towards the wall. At the wall. Nice, Raging that. Storm. Oh, my God. Now he's going to go for the follow up there. He goes for the standing two, forward one, missed the combo. I think it's because of the angle that it missed the last It hit. might have been the angle or because of Raven's body. Uh -oh. I know that combo is a bit different depending on the character you're doing it on. Okay. That's kind of hard to do because with Geese you have to be really specific about character specific combos. Yeah, you got to know, but if you're going to use the character, you might as well know that kind of stuff. Either that or go for the consistent uh -huh. option. That looks real good for Kokoma, and oh. as we said, it's. Phantom with a comeback. I think Phantom's going to go juggle. for a quick hit into the Rage Art. I think that's what he's probably going to be aiming for here. No, oh, doesn't get it. Ooh, oh. And the quick low there from Kokoma. And just like that, Kokoma one round away from sending the Phantom into the loser's bracket. But we'll see. The Phantom is not done yet. No, he's not. Oh, there we go with the gets drone. the grab. I think, what was he going for? It looks like he went for the running one during that. Threw him right out of it. Oh, went the There's other the way. Parry. And it's cool because he didn't waste the meter there. Maybe he was a bit patient. Gets the that's opportunity. Hit launcher. Yep. And that's why I think his down four is so good. Even though it's launch punishable, the ability to have a free counter combo without extending. Yeah. It doesn't need to use the meter or anything. Yeah. Oh, good duck. Oh, he's going to have to be careful. There's two meters on the other side. So if Kokum was able to get a canceler, it's going to be all over. Mm -hmm. Again. Again, the double throw. It's been working out so well for him. I don't think Kokoma has broken a single turn. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, what oh. a crush there. Red and look right. at that. The Phantom staying alive. Two rounds to one right now. Oh, there we go. He's going to get a combo, shot. yeah. And he's going to get to the wall as well. Let's see what kind of damage he's going to do. Oh, a setup. Oh, what's he going for? Oh, he the missed it. Step. That was some wow. great presence of mind there from Kokoma, able to step in in time. But man, Phantom, the Phantom tried to bet it all there. Yeah, yeah. You really want to make a big comeback with that uh, with that key charge. Uh oh, the Repuken puts him into rage now. It's a different ball game. One more hit. Oh, and the down two oh, does it. That's it. Kokoma. Moving on in the winner's bracket, the Phantom going to the losers now. But we'll see, of course, we'll see these players a bit later on. That was a pretty close match. Yeah, you I know, mean, even the second match two, even closer. Zero? Even though you won two games in a row. I feel like it could have gone either way, but we're yeah. going to go ahead and get our next matchup on stage. I think this is one that uh, I know Spag was talking about earlier, something he was really looking forward to. It's going to be District G, Kane and Trench, representing uh. the UK versus UIU Kudans, our reigning world champion. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. You know, uh, Kane and Trench is one of the Europeans that has the potential to be a quote-unquote Korean killer. 
Yeah. I, I think he already is. I mean, he's proven himself in tournament play that he can hang with the best in the world. So I want to see how this one's going to turn out. You know, uh, we've seen, and a lot of people have been talking about, you know, Kudans has been struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think he's been struggling. Personally, I just think everyone's been getting better. <laughs> but I think it's going to be an interesting set that we're going to see here. And I, I think... Uh, it's a very different Yoshimitsu that uh, maybe what he's used to. I think Yoshimitsu players in Korea and that we've seen throughout Asia, they're probably a bit more wild. And Kane yes. Trench has so much control over his character. I think that's really what's going to be the deciding factor in this matchup. If it's even close, we'll see. He plays him more with fundamentals. Like, like I Musician is a really good Yoshimitsu player. He's crazy. He's crazy. He's just go wild in all the Twitch clips that you see online. Yeah. Kane and Trench doesn't play like that. He plays super solid, stays back, punishes real well. He's really good at whiff punishing and blocking simple lows. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious how we will do against Q Dance. And as you said, he's a bit in a... Some people say he's a bit in a slope. You say he isn't. Maybe, maybe it's a bit both. We'll see. I mean, we'll see in this matchup. I mean, we could talk. If he loses, we'll talk bad about it. If he wins, then we'll be like, <laughs> I was right. So either way, I'm right. Let's right. go. You're right. <laughs> uh, but I think one of the things we're going to see, especially from Kane and Trench, is, you know, his style, is, his rhythm especially, it's the ability to interrupt the other player, and I think that's something that we're going to probably see. He's been playing very well against the Asian players as well, just because of the way his style is and the way he, he kind of spaces out his attacks and the timing of his attacks. And yeah. that rhythm is really, what I think, what's going to help him out in the long run. Yeah, that's true. I think Kane Trench is really knows how to move with purpose. He doesn't just sidestep because he wants uh, because you no, know, just a random sidestep. He does everything so calculated. But his opponent is the. The, the, the champion of the last season of the Tekken World Tour. Yep. Q Dance. Playing Devil Jin, of course. We're in Souk, the market. Wild stage. Here we go. Remember, guys, this is winner's, winner's brackets. Get hype. Support your homeboy. Round All right, here we go. Round one. First game. Down 4-1, goes in with the pokes, trying to test out Q-Dance. Yeah, what's and this, gonna is, this is going to be where it's going to be interesting, because they're going to be testing each other out, trying to figure out how, what's going to work and what's not, yeah. and how the style and how the tempo of the match is going to be. And right now, Kanan Trench, he's looking to you know play a little bit more on the offensive side. Yeah. He really wants to test his defenses. And I was staying back. Oh, oh Wraith Kick, follow up with the Demon Steel pedal, has him by the wall. Yeah. A 4-4 of uh, Devil Chin is a really good move. Yeah, such an amazing move, not just because of the ability to use it and because it's... <laughs> wow, he ran wow, it! He ran Everybody into it. runs into oh. it! Hey, look at my spinning sword thing. It's too good. Unblockable, good for Oki setups, especially at the wall, even if you side roll left, side roll right, you'll get hit by it. And you can hold it, so it will. Uh, the animation will be longer. Well, yeah, they definitely hold it after getting hit by it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there's a side step one, the follow-up here. And right now, dude, he's working on another lead here. Nice, goes to the back end stage, and there was no duck there. No. No poke. This time a normal, normal throw. Normal throw! And he puts him into rage now, but of course, everyone much more dangerous with rage. Especially Devil Jin, he's got that blue rage. Oh, there we go, the hell sweep. He has double back four there. Oh, and the follow-up, he should be able to end it here. No, the angle! Oh, he's still alive! Oh! Nice slow motion victory there, tied up on rounds, one round apiece. South Korea versus the United Kingdom. Nice Electric Wind God the follow up there. This is going to be big damage because he's going to get the wall. He's going to put damage, Oki. Nope, damage. Let's we'll see what he does here. And nice. nice check there from Kane and Trench, you know, trying to make sure that he's uh, covering all bases just in case he's trying to sidestep. Mm -hmm. Q is being more patient right now. I think you gotta be. I mean, if you're a Mishima player and you know that you have weaknesses in both the Hell Sweep and the Electric and God Fist, a lot of players are looking out for that kind of stuff. So you're gonna have to pick your pokes wisely. And I think that's why more often than not, from Devil Jin players, we see the Wraith Kick, we see the Demon Steel Pedal, we see more of those moves instead of the traditional overpowering moves that we know from the Mishimas. Yeah, exactly. Like with Devil Jin, you gotta play a bit more conservative because of the the electrics. Oh, Katie Trench has the lead right now. Looking really good. Yeah. Look at those God Fists though. He's pumping them out now. Time is running, 10 yeah, seconds 10 left. Seconds. Not a lot of time. Oh, oh the Power Crush running the other way. He tried to chase him down. Total time left. Two, one. Oh, oh the Hell Sweep. The Hell Sweep able to pull it out. And again, great stuff there from Kudans. Here we go. Potential final round of match number one. Two rounds to one. Gets nice the float. Push. Not going to do a lot of damage, though. Any damage is better than no damage. Yeah, and oh. it was his turn, of course, going to sit stance. Oh, oh, great block. He gets the punish with the wall standing 2-2. Following up here, gets the screw. That's a wall going before the unblockable. No. 
Oh, another opportunity. Good tsunami on the yeah. on the punish. Oh god, that was huge. He does have rage, so he's gonna do extra damage. He's gonna get close to the wall. Oh, he does he's get the wall. He gets the wall. One mix up here. Demon Paw, follow up. Nice duck. Crouch has two. Gotta respect the rage drive attempt. Oh, Cut him out of the uh, fourth four. Oh, and, and the, the twin down. Lancer. Look at that. Very clean play there from Kudon. Able to shut down Kane and Trench towards yeah. the end there. But nice recovery and able to come back. You know, he lost the first opening round, but he was able to hold it down. And he's looking pretty calm and confident here in match number two. You can see how fast these Koreans can adapt to an opponent's play style. Yeah. Some of them only take one round. You know, the faster you do it, the better you get at the game. Well, is it really adaptation or is it just them playing their style? Mm. We'll see. Because, I mean, he didn't take too many risks. He was playing the no. standard machine affair. Yeah. And uh, he, he went for those opportunities, whatever he had. I think really it was... Uh, Kane and Trench kind of let, let up on his offense. He kind of held back there. I think he's going to have to go nuts if he really wants to see some, some results here. Do you, are, are you saying that he has to go full eye musician style? I wouldn't say eye musician style. I just think he has to start testing Kudans and what he knows and what he doesn't in the matchup. Yeah. He didn't use a lot of moves. He didn't use flash or, or any. Yet. Or the low sweep. Yeah, he didn't go for the sweep at all either. Yeah. I mean, it's such a big risk, though. You got to think about that kind of stuff. Anyways, down forward ones are starting to be used. Oh, and there's a guy Beautiful, God fist. beautiful electric. Going to the wall. Demon Steel with the pedal. Flip over again. Double back four. Into the Wraith Kick. And man, Kudans right now, he's making all the right reads. Everything's working out for him yes. offensively. Wow. And he knew the spacing there wasn't going to hit. Able to close it out. Round number one for Kudans. That was excellent spacing game from Kudans back then. Oh. And there's the counter hit launcher from Kane and Trench. He's going to the wall. Going for damage. He's going to go for the back back one. No. This nope. time going for the sidestep attack. The follow up. Oh. Nice interrupt with the jab. Nice again, Kudans wave. make really good use of that back four. There we go, front, front two. And look at that, he's working on another round, just like wow. that, two rounds to one, and potentially wow. looking to send Kane and Trench into the loser's bracket. That was really quick. Yeah, Those were two, two quick rounds. He's making the right decisions, you know. He's gotten him to duck many times now. He's hit that Wraith kick and it paid off. And right. the other thing you got to worry about is, like, he's he probably t testing him. He wants him to duck, right? That's he's going for the Godfist so much, but every time he went for another duck, Kudans was able to throw out that mid. Yeah. But right now, a good lead for Kane and Trench. He has him by the wall as well. That's exactly where he wants him. We haven't seen a lot of down back twos from Kudans as well, but I don't think he needs to because he can, all he does is the up forward four. Oh, there oh. he does! And in the back, the teleportation. The Phantom isn't the only one who can use it. Yeah. You know, Kane and Trench not done yet. He's still hanging in there. But again, the Wraith Kick is yeah. hitting. He's going to have to start blocking those. He's, he's ducking too much. Oh, there Fabuki we go. knee, follow up. He's going to go push through the wall. Nice that's carry. That's a good wall carry. Oh, yeah. That's some amazing wall carry. What kind of mix-up are we going to see? Goes for the low. Oh, Kudan's ready for it. <laughs> nice cancel early. He ended it early there. Yeah. He didn't want to get punished there. Obviously, he knows Kudan's has the patience. Oh, look at that Excellent. punish. Excellent. Back to two. What's oh. he going to do? Oh, be careful. <laughs> what was that? Oh, he gets Backlands. it all the other way. Rage. Oh, that might be it. One more mix-up. Broken it play. A bit too far. Down for it one. It's going to be safe. Oh, oh he's he going to finish, finish the string. So careful, and oh! And the slow motion finish, and Kudans taking it over wow. Kane and Trench in a nail biter. Could have gone either way at the end of that round. Who knows what would have happened after that? But UIU's <laughs> Kudans, the reigning world champion, moving on in the winner's bracket side, top 32, and Kane and Trench is going to have to try his hands in the loser's bracket now, where I think it's going to be very interesting once we get towards that later match later on today. He could, have, he could have just finished that string. He could have. I mean, he had it, but it was but so it was, hard. It was you, so risky. It's not one of those things that you could really hit for me there. No, he went for the true. low. And I feel like if you're going to go for that low and you're going to get punished anyways, you might as well finish it, right? Yeah. Just go for the risk. It's already. But he, he wants to play super solid. But yeah. He had a sliver of life left, though. So yeah. he probably should have went for it. But either way, we're going to get our next matchup on stage. I believe it's going to be first on eSports uh, low high, and I think Lohai. he's going up against Kira Kira, right? Kira Kira from Switzerland. My insanity, Kira Kira. Yo, know, Kira Kira, not a stranger to Korean play. He was no. able to go uh, to the IESF tournament last year, and he was able to place very well in Korea, beating one of the Korean players in Jun Ding. Yeah, uh, correct. But what will he do in this matchup against Lohai? Lohai, a different player, of course, very much well known for his Shaheen play. Mm -hmm. But which character is going to bring in this matchup? We know he can use a number of characters, but more often than not, tried and true, he is using uh, Shaheen. I really like to see him use Law, but that's just uh, that, that's what a lot of people want to see. I want to see a Law because the last time he picked Law, he won the Grand Finals of Correct, game. but he didn't use Law until the Grand Finals. Until that's the, the thing. Game. Maybe he's saving it for Grand Finals again. Who knows? He has a chance. This is winner's side action. So if you guys are tuning in right now, we're going to see Kira Kira versus Lohai.
Excellent. And it's going to be an interesting matchup with Shaheen versus Eliza. Lohai, arguably the best Shaheen in the world. Oh, yeah. Against uh, Kirikiri's Eliza. The best Eliza in Europe. I don't know if uh, Korea has really good Eliza players. We got Chanel, of Yeah, course. I mean, they, they definitely do. They definitely have some amazing uh, Eliza play. But this is a very different Eliza from what I've seen. A yeah. very different Eliza. So we're going to see whether or not this is going to work in this matchup. But you got to watch out. Lohai has the white pants equipped. Gets a oh, counter hit. Counter hits. He's going to push towards the wall as well. Oh, oh, he dropped it. Good punish. Nice confirmation. Able to get a little bit more damage out of it. Mm -hmm. And let's see what kind of OK we're going to see. Goes for the mid option there. Not going for the high early on. Pokes him in between. You know, Lohai is really good at... He doesn't use big flashy combos to, uh, to kill his opponent. He likes to use his pokes. The down four once. The down the back trees, three. Yeah, the he's back using trees. a lot of stuff. Yes. And, and the, his use of down back two and able to confirm it is such a great tool for his play style because yes. he likes to check people. He likes to see if they're moving. He likes to see whether or not they're ducking as well. So great stuff. Again, okay, another that's counter the hit from the time. string. Wow, that's the one one two string and only the third hit on counter hit will launch. Yeah, and of course getting the follow up and that's guaranteed there on the uh, on the counter hit follow up. Nice again. Uh, what an amazing punish. punish. And you know, Lohai is in full control of this matchup. It's not looking good for Kira Kira. No, not at all. He still needs to find a way. He does. I don't think he knows the matchup very well. And that's what we see by Loa. That's what I mean with the low, the, the pokes. That's how he kills his opponents. Yeah, and th that's the thing I w I'm going to say. You know, with the matchup, you got to do your homework here. Loha is probably one of the most documented players that we've seen mm -hmm. on the Tekken World Tour. He's been going to so many events, and he's always using Shaheen. Exactly. So you got to do your homework. It's just one character matchup that you have to learn, but you still have to learn it, and you still have to know what to do. Oh, he's doing much better in this round, though. He mm -hmm. has it by the wall. He was able to do more damage there, but because of the side wall stun, he wasn't able to get more. But that's going to close go. it out Counter there. Counter hits into it. So Kira Kira staying alive here in match number one. It's two rounds to one right now. And we're going to see what kind of stuff he's going to be able to pull out with the Narcolectic Vampire. And excellent. Just uh, Loha, just with uh, the read with the hop kick. Yeah, I want to say read. He knows nope. it's going to hit. It's I not knows. a read. He is, he is the Shaheen. I mean, you got to be confident. If you're going to do a hop kick, it's not a hop kick. He's flipping in the air. <laughs> this guy has all the confidence. Oh, what a sidestep. Excellent sidestep, side but didn't get the, the, the angle. Yeah, you know, that's the thing, though. It's like that probably going to change a lot in the matchup because he can no longer use that string. He can no longer mix it up. No. He knows that Shaheen is ready for that. There we go the down three. The dive kicks aren't really working for uh, Oh, Kira down Kira. forward two, and that's wow. going to be it. Low high, you know, even though he got around there, Kira Kira got around. I would say Lohai dominated that match way too much. I 100% agree with you. Yeah, and the only reason why he got a lot of that damage is because he was by the wall. He had those opportunities for that 50-50 mix-up. All right, he puts his hat back on over his headset. <laughs> He's still all smiles. You know, Kira Kira has been smiling the entire weekend, playing against the amazing talent here in Poland. But he now has to make some hard decisions here. He has to go in for the kill. He's down 0-1 to one here in the winner's bracket side. It's only a first two. Eh? You know, I don't know how many times this has happened, but we get random select <laughs> on stages, but we always is get the, the same, same stage. stage. This, this has is been happening the, the entire weekend. I think it's the PS4. It must be, it must be the console. We can't, we're not going to blame the PS4. We're gonna, I'm going to blame the players. The players. Yeah. That's the new mix-up. Just go to... Uh, the no mix-up mix-up? The no mix-up mix-up, but with stage select. Yeah, uh, I guess so. I guess if you can win at the stage select, you can win at the game, right? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go into match number two. Low high up 1-0 right now. If you guys are tuning in, depending on where you are in the world, I hope you are enjoying some good-ass Tekken. Spread the word. It's on twitch.tv slash Tekken. Let everyone know that you're watching and enjoying it with us, whether you're watching from here or the restream on Avoiding the Puddle or on Green Tech, and I hope you're enjoying this match. Wow. That was an excellent. That was a lot of damage just from a simple hop kick. Nice, slow parry, going the other way here. He might be able to close it out. This might kill, no, maybe? Wow, that's a really hard ender to do. Yeah, he was able to dash up enough with the three, yeah. transition into the snake three as well. Because you gotta cancel your own. Yeah, you gotta do it just quick enough as well mm -hmm. to get the full animation, uh-oh. The down three. It's and a really good low poke, go into snake stance. Yeah, it kinda really nullifies uh, any of the mix-up options afterwards mm -hmm. defensively for his opponent. So it's actually a great thing, especially when it hits. When it hits, that's yeah. when it becomes really scary. Exactly, exactly. Because Jad, coupled with his down forward one, it just becomes such a great tool. There's a Wasani 3-3 punish the as well. That's the correct punish for yeah. that screen. And you can just stay patient. I mean, what are you going to do if you just block her attacks? Nothing, mm -hmm. right? She's going to have to go for these risks eventually there. Goes for the high. Uh-oh. Oh, he oh, missed he the missed dive kick opportunity. Kick. No. And there's a punish. Look at that. Two rounds straight. Lohai in cruise control right now. 
Kira Kira is going to start having to do some stuff here in the matchup. Yeah, he tried to do go, go for the low wall splat, but it didn't work out. Try to fish with the down 4-2 there, unable to get anything. And again, this time with the patience, below high, not punishing that time. Get up. Power crush into the low, the follow-up, and against the wall, this is where you want to have him. Again, a missed dive kick. Yeah, missed input, maybe a bit nervous here, yeah. who knows? It's winner final, uh, winner bracket, so... Anything can happen. And there's oh, the wall yeah. splat that we're seeing. Should be able to close it out. Oh, never mind. All right, wow. got it. So Kira Kira on the scoreboard again. Two rounds to one. Same this as is last game. an opportunity to turn it around here, but a little bit short on resources here. I know he obviously valued having the extra damage at the wall. He's going to have to build up the meter, which he will. He's getting there, especially when. Oh, he's did you up. see that dirt? But he didn't no. have any meter to extend it. Yeah. Again. Low high with the. Has decent hopkins. Not just that, he's gonna have the other side of the wall here. Gets the follow up. Gonna have to be careful. Use the meter early on here. Oh it's no, that's gonna oh, hit. That's Is that gonna kill though? Oh no, this could be might close. Kill. It might. I think it's gonna kill. No, no not. still alive here. Now in rage as well. What makes him can do it? Goes to the low. Oh, oh and the down, down forward, forward one. one hits the leg. Hits the limb of Eliza yeah, and man, Kira Kira goes down into the loser's bracket. First on Esports, Lohai will move on in our winner's bracket. Of course, we're going to see him later on as well. But man, an amazing set of matches so far today. Yeah, I think all the Koreans that we've seen so far has made it through the uh, winner's yeah. side. We're gonna ha we have wins uh, on, the, on the opposite end. So every Korean player so far has been winning their matchups. Very exciting matchups nonetheless. So of course, we're going to have a much more stacked uh, winner's bracket as we carry on into our top 16 as well. Man, this is some good good Tekken. Yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying I'm, it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm so excited for it as well because, you know, the high level of play, the, the, the fact that there are so many international, commu uh, international players here makes it for such an exciting event. Yeah, and I think it's a, something that's a, a blessing really from the Tekken World Tour that we get to see a lot of these players around the world. You know, True. these guys have been traveling so much. Yeah. It's, it's really a testament for, of course, their dedication for the game and, of course, the amazing program that the team at Twitch and Bandai Namco Entertainment has put together. So I'm really looking forward to, of course, more events. This is only the first master event for Europe, and I know there's another one that's going to be happening next month in the United Kingdom, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So. I, think, I think with the change with the Ticket World Season 2, without the restrictions, it makes it more exciting. Oh, yeah, that means players are going to be going everywhere. There's yeah. no longer uh, players just traveling there for the money. They're no. traveling for the points, they're traveling for the pride, of course, and there is no restriction at all. They're going to see players from all skill levels, from all countries around the world at your local event. And I think that's really a great value. It not only levels up the people that go to the event, it levels up also the local scene that's really trying to embrace, uh, of course, what Tekken has going on. Yeah. So we have uh, Circa Joey Fury stepping up on stage, the sole North American representative here. And he's been doing it in a good way. And he's going up, I believe, against Devil Kazuya from Italy, yeah? Italy, Devil Kazuya. I think this is the first. I, uh, there were a few uh, winner matches that aren't Kore versus Koreans, against Koreans. But I'm not sure who will win this one because Circa Joey Fury has been doing really well. He uh, came out of the winner brackets of his pool. Uh, I don't think he's uh, adjusted yet to the time zone, to the changes from uh, the I region. think it's very difficult for a lot of the players to yeah. adjust the time zones if they're not used to it. And, uh, okay, it looks like, you know, Joey's going to be going with Jack here in the matchup here. We have Arctic Snowfall. There are no walls. So it could go either way. Jack has probably a little bit more freedom to move here. He won't get yeah. cornered. But in the same token, uh, Jack can really corner Devil Jin as well. I think I think with Jack it, it, it's going to be a little bit harder, as you said. Like he's a, he's a big body. He, he has a really weird hitbox. Yeah. And if he sidesteps, he, he can get hit by certain moves as well. We'll see. You know, it's going to be tough because I think the way that Joey plays Jack, it's going to be testing Devil Jin and his ability to execute here. So we're going to see whether or not he can start punishing things like a max range down forward too. We're going to see what happens when he does a max range down back one as well. <laughs> he started trying to open yeah, with he, a health he tried to party. Yeah. All right, nice wall standing 1-4, able to get the knockdown. Goes for the broken plate, but a big punish there from Joey Fury. And I think this is going to be a nice test of spacing for both yeah. of these players. Uh oh, rolls back. Oh, oh, right through the power crush. And Joey Fury in rage, and that oh, Demon Steel pedal, the follow-up here. Goes for the Twin Lancer. Oh, did you see that mini backdash? That went between it. That's oh, so yeah. sick. And the Rage Art, he's going to take that first round. But man, what impressive display of spacing for both of these players early on. Round number one only. And again, this and is again? a match that we don't normally see. We don't see U.S. versus Italy that often, and it's nice to see this matchup, of course, courtesy of the Tekken World Tour. Yes, that's true. Nice, goes for the down forward two, unable to get anything. 
and Joey still waiting for that. Using the you, using that standing two is such a great uh, spacing tool, yeah, yeah. and it really opens up a world of hurt here because he has so many options. He has the down back one. He has the jackhammer, the big elbow. Oh, he's trying to scissor him. Yeah, but his opponent, Devil, Kazu uh, Devil Kazuya, plays Devil Jin. Devil Jin also has really good tools as well. Yeah. He's got also like down back two, a really good low poke. Uh, he's a machine, so he's got the electrics, the hell sweep, but when he gets blocked, you get stuff like that. Yeah, you know, more often than not, the, the choice pokes here that Devil Jin has, mm -hmm. he's going to have the up forward for the Wraith Kick, but the Wraith Kick is not invincible on the startup. It's a bit slower, so, oh my, oh my god, god. Nice he interrupted, interrupt, but, but he dropped, dropped it. it. Because he's a bigger character, it was a bit harder to get the follow-up, and look at the Rage wow. Joey Fury up two rounds now. But as I was saying, you know, the Wraith Kick there, it's not invincible on the way up. You know, we're going to see the standing twos from Joey Fury. He might be able to float him out of the air, or he might down forward one out of the air as well. So he's going to have to be careful. He's going to have to rely more on his spacing to avoid uh, the long limbs of Jack. Oh, don't break, doesn't break the Wumpus 2 throw. Yeah, it gets the follow up here. What kind of okay. Oki? He goes to the debug. You know, Joey Fury is looking so strong here in this first match. Yes. Oh, now we're finally starting to see the Demon Paw. And look, maybe the impatience here. Wow, we could have ducked that string of launch punishment, but he didn't. Wow. Oh my god, three rounds straight for Circa Joe if you're from the US, yeah. taunting with an unblockable at the end. Yeah, that dark greeting wow. saying, hello, welcome to America. <laughs> His match yesterday that I saw, you know, he was playing against a local player from Poland, and at the end he tried to just do 10 hits. <laughs> Interesting, all right. Right now, Joey Fury looking very strong, obviously. Going up against a strong player in Devil Kazuya, but you know, right now, this is proving to be very difficult for his Devil Jin. But match number two coming up. This time we have walls, so this could change everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. A wall stage can do a lot of, a lot of chains. I really like this stage. I really like the shape of the stage. It's quite even and just the look of it. I like the music. This music is good. Some good ass music. <laughs> All right, let's go. The down back two, up four four. Oh, he good went for punish. a debug. I can't believe he went for the raw debug early on. Of course, great reflexes from Devil Kazuya. Able to block, punish, and get the wall. But the wall what combo, questionable. I don't agree with that. Now spoking away. Yeah, Joey Fury content with just standing there. You know, he's not really afraid of Devil Jin until he starts going for those health sweeps. Just waiting for an opening. Oh, oh just nice out of pacing. range. Oh, seed plant. One more time. No, nope. he's on back one, whiffed, because he lied down. Oh, this time going for the laser cannon. Oh, he oh. had a whiff. The god Excellent. phase. Oh, he could have ended it there with a rage art, but doesn't matter. Able to close it out there with the steel pedal. And just like that, Devil, Devil Kazuya yeah. taking around. Nice luck. One, one, two. There's again the Wraith kick. Yeah. Oh, he's now, Joey Fury starting to use the jackhammer now offensively, but just the tip of that hell sweep. The nice dash in for the three ring circus to follow up into the four, three plus four. That's a huge risk, risk that it took, but it paid off. You know what? I think it's a necessary risk. You know, for Mishima players to succeed, they have to take risks. They have to go for the hell sweep. Otherwise, there is no mix up. There is no devil gin. You can't just rely on electrics. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're good as hell, yeah, you can, but nah, not against these players. But then your whiff punishing also has to be on point. Oh, yeah. You have to use an electric like it's a jab. Yeah. Like you breathe on someone with an electric. That's what it's got to be. <laughs> But Let's right see if now. Devil Kazoo can do it right now. Oh, he has rage. One he, electric can kill him. One anything can kill him. He, oh, 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 that was big there. He had an opportunity, but Joey Fury able to, you know, be defensively sound towards the end there. Yeah. Oh, second hit. This time getting punished with the wall standing 1-4. Nice spring kick to beat out the steel pedal. No duck on that swing. Oh, good punish. And that's something Excellent that Devil Jin can do. It's because of the range of that move. It's so wide. Yeah, that move can punish a lot of things that aren't normally punishable by most of the cast. Mm -hmm. Out 4 4, cut him ducking. Crouch dash 3, a jackhammer follow up here, about even on life, even on rounds as well. Oh. But Joey Fury snaking this one away here, gets the wall and closes it out. And just like that, Joey Fury one round away from moving on in the winner's bracket. He looks so focused right now. He, he does all the right things in this round. I don't know what Devil Kazuya can do. Oh, the raid kick able to beat out the down 2, it looked like there. This time the down 4 wow. 2, not afraid. Joey Fury going the other way. Let's see what he does here. Goes for the wall carry. Uh. Not close enough to the wall, but now it gets it. Back two, double back two. Okay. Three. This no, time the low. Oh, the oh, power wow. crush. That was smart. Oh, that's going to hit for sure, but it's not going to kill. It's and not. he's going to put him into the red zone, though. This is going to be where Jack becomes even more scary because any of his one pokes here can kill. But not just that, he has access to the rage drive as well. Oh, my gosh. That's going to kill. I am faint. No. And Joey Fury with a quick down forward one. Clutching it out over Italy's Devil Kazuya. Devil Kazuya now going to the loser bracket, and Joey Fury moving forward, where he's going to probably have to play against the winner of the next matchup, which is going to be Rock's Dragon's Knee and 
Crazy Super Akuma. So this is going to be an interesting set because we have all three territories between Europe, the Americas, and Asia yeah. battling it out on that side of the bracket. So that's going to be really interesting. But as we mentioned, this matchup is going to be... I talked to both of the players earlier on, right? Okay. So I asked Nii, nee, like, hey, Nii, nee, you're using a lot of characters in the tournament. You're using you know, a lot of characters in the Tekken World Tour. Which character are you going to use in this matchup against Akuma? And he said he's thinking either Brian or Paul. Brian or Paul. Brian or Paul. I'd like Which, to see his Brian. Yeah, you know, I mean, everyone wants to see his Brian. <laughs> Who doesn't want to see this guy's Brian? Everyone wants to see his Brian. But I don't know, man. I, I think uh, it was interesting because I was talking to Super Akuma afterwards, and uh, Super Akuma mentioned, I hope he uses Brian. So he probably has something up his sleeve. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah. But if he picks Paul, you know, I think Paul is the better tournament character uh, compared with Brian. I would, I would say, yeah. I think um, Paul is definitely the better tournament character. Also, Paul is actually, I think, really good against Akuma because it, it's very difficult for Akuma to get any decent damage off of any of the risks. And the, th the problem is, Ni does not take risks with Paul. He does not take risks. No. He's not going to throw out an errant death fist. He's not going to go for a demo man. He only goes for those moves when he knows they're going to hit and when he knows that they're in range. He's not going to get the trip stun from the from the from the demo man. He's going to make sure it knocks down. Yeah, yeah. That's what you got to do with immaculate spacing. But interesting here. There's a pick that we probably didn't expect. So maybe he was playing it up. Maybe he was trying to get into the mine. But looks like Rock's Dragon's knee picking Kazuya. Wow. From all characters, Kazuya. This yeah. is a lore battle. We're in this Brimstone is definitely a lore battle. And oh, it is the right stage to do it. <laughs> but this is a surprise, surprise. So here we go. France versus Korea. Battle for the winner's side positioning. You know, Kazuya is also a very simple Mishima. You, you, don't need, you only need a couple of moves to make him really effective. Like his front front one, uh, front front three, excuse me. I feel, like that's, I feel like that's most characters at the high level. You don't want to take too many risks here. No, no. Just play compact. Just use a select few select moves and just try to win with those. Yeah. And look at this beautiful movement here from uh, Ni on the first player side. Mm -hmm. Oh, the down three. Uh, down four, I think me. that's going to be a, a huge determinant factor here in the matchup is whether or not Super Kuma is going to get flowing offensively because the fear of using the down four and all his other moves, mm -hmm. that changes. If Akuma is not able to go low when he wants to, that no. completely changes everything. Akuma has nothing. And uh, of course, Ni has the reactions to block those yeah. and the intuition and also the experience. As not just that, you know, Kazuya gets a wall rising too uh, at any range from blocking that as well. So he's going to get a combo no matter what. And that's going to be very scary in this yeah. matchup. <gasps> the Godfist out of the flip. Going to towards the wall. Oh, beautiful damage. You know, it seems like uh, Super Akuma is playing a bit more defensively with his, uh, oh, and as I say, gets. Yeah, but he had to use the meter, so he couldn't yeah. get all the damage there. No. Has another opportunity here. He's building up the meter this time around. Oh, he goes for the wall rising, too. And look at that Excellent. mini sidestep. Side you know, he knows this matchup so well. He's played yeah. this matchup a lot. He has training partners that use this character, so it's going to be very difficult for Super Akuma to capitalize. Oh, here wow. we go. Is he going to do the demon? Demon. Yes, That's sir. It. That might be enough to kill. Is this going to kill? That might be you enough. Think? I think it is. Oh, oh, it's not that enough. Hit. He's going to have Just to do something. Hit. What's he going to do? Going to risk it. Go for it. Oh, hit. the delay. The second hit of the tsunami kicks. Man. Oh. That was an amazing and impressive potential comeback there for Super Akuma, but it was not enough. If he just blocked it, he could have just punished it. But he was too greedy. He really wanted to, to hit that. It, it was the it was the mind game, though. You got to think about it. You know, he's gonna do down forward four. He's not gonna finish. There's no way he's gonna kill himself and finish no, it. No. But he did, and that's the crazy part. There is knee the mind game over the mind game. The mind game over the mind game. Oh yeah, I like the way he said there's that. There's layers, man. Yeah. You got to think about this kind of stuff. Right now, he's up two rounds to one, and that's a big change. It would have been tied up otherwise. And now he's in, sitting comfortable. Oh, the crowd chest three that beating the fireball. the fireball. It goes through the fireballs. It has mm -hmm. a full invulnerability. There are certain moves in the game that are de uh, they're programmed to beat fireballs, and that's one of them. That's a, that's a fun fact that I didn't know. Yeah, there's uh, characters in this game, they have a few moves to beat out. Wow, he had an opportunity. But Shakunetsu, what? Oh, oh back dash, get out of there. Yep, stay away. Oh, nice. Excellent. Super Akuma, an excellent choice of moves there, able to use the forward, forward, right kick. And he is now on the board. But that's, we were talking about that. It. The wall standing too, as you said, at any range can launch punish it. He's at the wall going for the max damage. He's really well, he's really working his Kazuya. Yeah, the back two here. This time going for the crowd chest three. Look at the offense here. Oh. It's gonna be very difficult because yeah. you know he's gonna start doing mini sidesteps. One of the things you're gonna see a lot from me, he's gonna do mini sidesteps between the offense and wow, that was a great way to get out. Minimal damage sustained. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, the risk. I mean, it's it's crazy, too, because he has to go for the stuff like that. He has to. But Nia's been ready. Wow. And the front four to end it up. 
It's a good move. Three convincing rounds for Rox Dragon, Sweden. You know, and the, you know, right now the best player in the world, Rox Dragon's knee. He is on stage right now, showing why he's the best player in the world. He is not afraid of Akuma. As you said, he knows all the matchups. He's got training partners in Korea. He plays Akuma. So I've seen him play Akuma. He plays all the. He plays the entire character. He probably list. has the the highest rank for most characters. <laughs> but yeah, man, the, those Korean death matches, man. All right, we are in the Infinite Azure, and now that changes everything as well. I mean, less damage for both characters overall. Mm -hmm. But Akuma, if he has the meter, can dish out probably more damage overall. Oh, of course. He's got the best punishment if he's got meter. Yeah, 10 frame punish, cancel. From low? Uh, <laughs> yeah, from yeah from the low jab, from, yeah. uh, from the standing position, he's able to do it all. I mean, even the Dragon Punch itself is 10 frames. Nice. He's gonna get punished in there, that's the back one too, and that's a, something he'll consistently get unless it's a max range fireball as well. And you saw him twitch duck against because he expected that second to hit of the stream, but it didn't happen. Oh, and then he just whiffed wow. the, the Tatsu there. Yeah, and it's a, a punish. punish. By me. Going in with the electrics. Now, you, you see Super Akuma doesn't like to use the flip anymore because he knows, Ni knows how to play against him, and now he doesn't drop it. it yeah, and you know, it really changed the d dynamic there because he had the meter, he was able to do a lot of significant damage there, and that's what he needs. But the thing is, oh, oh my god, he got greedy again. And, and that's got to tell you, you know, he's still going for the down four, he's still going for the low roundhouse kick. Yeah. But every single time, almost every single time outside of that first time, he's gotten punished by the, the demon gut punch there. And he's going to have to be careful because that thing, those are adding up. They are costing him rounds. He needs to change up, he needs to try something different, but I don't think he knows how. What else does Akuma have? He has nothing at that range. So he's going to have to be a bit more patient, look for these opportunities. I think really it's going to come down to how he's going to be sidestepping in the matchup. But the thing is, Nii does not take risk. He very often does not throw out moves. He only has moves you're either going to block it or you're going to get hit by it. He's not going to throw out a move where you're going to sidestep it. I don't think he's going to win. What? Oh, did what? you see That's the confirmation? Four. He went for the up forward four, hoping he would get a counter hit over a low, maybe. But still, it paid off in a big way. Oh, look at that. It's not looking good right now. Rock's dragging E one round away from moving on. If he wins this match, he's going to end up facing Circuit Joey Fury on the other side of the winner's bracket later. Every time that Super Akuma used that move, Ni knew exactly when to sidestep and how to punish it with the one, two, three, four in the back. But now we got Super Akuma. He's got two full bars. Oh, and look at that. Oh. The patience and the perfect spacing with the God Fist. He is now in the red, but he has full meter. He has a chance here. He can stay alive. Excellent duck by knee, but no punish. But maybe it was a bit too far. Couldn't do okay. well. Oh, he had the counter, but he did confirm. Here's the big combo oh. follow up. He has rage as well, so he's doing extra damage. Demon not a factor right now. He has no meter to extend the range of the demon. Even on life right now. Both got rage. Trying to play keep away. He's going to have to be careful to crouch dash three. Oh my oh, god! Prince. What did I say? That was sick! That was sick! He pulled it out right when it happened. <laughs> Damn it. Super Akuma oh. goes down. He's going to have another chance in the loser bracket, but man, what an impressive performance by Ni. Yeah, Ni was waiting for that. Ni was waiting for that fireball. Ah. I'm going to end it with the crouch dash three. Bam! The, the flying kick right through wow. the fireball. And the only, thing, the only time I knew that it would go over the fireball is because of the story mode battle. Oh, yeah. It's one of those moves that you have with the button. Yeah. But, man, we're going to go ahead and go get more matches up on stage. Oh, man. So, what, we're, we're, is that what the word is? We're taking a quick break? Okay, okay, guys, we'll be back with more tech in action. There's a lot more stuff coming up, so stay tuned. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the European Tech World Tour Masters event, Fighting Games Challenge. I'm Will Van Bill. with me is Mark Man, and we're ready for some more winner side bracket action. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a battle between Italy and South Korea. We have uh, IG Sion, and he's going to go up against Rock's Dragon Chanel. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward for them. I, I don't know who uh, Chanel is going to pick. I, I really want to see his Eliza. I want to see the contrast between his Eliza and uh, Kira Kira's Eliza. We'll see, but it looks like right now he's hovered over Elisa. I think he has picked the robot baddie. We'll see, and it looks like it's going to be Machine Mommy on the other side. So it's going to be Kazumi versus Alisa. And we're going to the Devil's Pit. The Devil's Pit. You know, we've had uh, such a barrage of back-to-back -back amazing matches so far. I'm actually looking forward to We have two more winner side matches, this one being one. And then after this, we have District Giza ASIM versus uh, First on Esports Rongchu. Ooh, and like that's going to be the next matchup after this. And then after that, we're going to do some of the loser side matches on our top 24 leading up to our top 16 as well so let's see how this one's gonna work out you got see them oh you can hear the Italians <laughs> cheering their their fellow countrymen on yeah. all six of them 
and then his opponents, Alisa, Chanel, with the Mount Mask. Here we go, round one. Starts off with a full crouch, down forward, one plus two. Yeah, that's a, yeah. such an amazing move and such an amazing series there yeah. from Alisa. It's going to be got, interesting to see because, like, you know, uh, because of the, the matchup right now, fighting against Kazumi, I think she's going to be obviously a little bit more limited on the kind of pokes that she can use. She can't have that much wind-up. Oh, my gosh. Speaking wow. of wind-up, that big kick, the follow-up. she get the wall as well. And the Tiger to end it. What's Oki? Oh, see, I'm doing a great job here in round one, but now in a bad position. Great block. Check out Rage. How's she going to, to utilize it? You know, a lot of people say, you know, Chanel is a fan favorite. A lot of people like to see how Chanel plays, and not only how he plays in the game, but also reacting between rounds, between matches. Definitely likes to play it up for the crowd. Definitely, definitely. Oh, got him ducking. You know, Alisa got a really buff uh, this game. He, he's getting used a lot more. The down tree is a good addition to the tools that Alisa got. Amazing addition, and not just a good poke, a great counter hit attack as well. Nice. Decent range as well. Yeah, and, and making, you know, pretty much making it very hard to punish on the max distance as well. Yeah, excellent. And a counter hit for to the wall. And because of the ability of having the built-in mix-up as well, just a dangerous overall tool. Yeah. It is punishable, but not sometimes that, not when you... Oh, my gosh. That that second wow. How does that work? Oh, is it minus 30? Is it 30 frame? I don't think so. But what? hey, that worked out. Do it again. <laughs> That's sick. Tied up on rounds. Round three. Chanel knew it would hit. Yeah. No, that's, that's a thing. Only a true robot master can do this. Here we go. There's a follow-up here. And another great series here. Now, Sion having him, yeah. having him by the wall. And again, Chanel fighting out. He tried to go for the wall spot, but he didn't get up in time. Oh, oh caught him. You're going to try to sidestep against me? Not today. Goes again. See, and th that's really good about Alyssa. She, she can just not finish her combos, go for the Oki, go for another setup. It re it really, it's really good for her. You know, he kind of figured out what Sion was doing here. He was using a lot of the down forward ones, continuing with the side step with more pressure. And then finally, Chanel able to use the standing four kick. Now we're on the Wallace stage. I think this benefits Alyssa more because, you know, she's really good at long range. Oh, and the ability to backdash as well. Wow, normal throw. Going the other way now. Go, go. Okay, back one. Oh, just using the range. Yeah, just oh, the second hit landed, and I don't think that's what he wanted with that air and jump there. Oh, that's season. gonna be oh, it. Wow. Slam dunk. Excellent. That's also a new addition to the tools of uh, Alisa. That 14 frame launcher, the front three two that you just saw by Chanel. It's re it's got really good range, and you saw the whiff punch. It was yeah. excellent. I see a lot of people use that as a as a whiff punish, as a sidestep kind of punish. Mm -hmm. It's a, a great tool overall. Leads to a follow up as well. So good stuff there from Chanel. Able to come back. You know, he was. Uh, I feel like he was struggling early on. He was able to make that comeback in quite easy fashion. But we'll see, of course, if there's any adjustments here. We're going to go to the Howard Estate, and we haven't seen it yet. But mm -hmm. I want to see all the walls taken down. Let's go down and to the, the balcony. Yeah, let's go down. They can. It can happen. No. It hasn't happened yet. No, I'm hasn't. not getting my hopes up, but, you know, I always got to cheer for it. Wow. Anyways, if you guys are tuning in right now, you're watching twitch.tv slash tech, and you're watching Top 32 Action here for our Master right. event, the first Master event here on the European Master Series. This is game two between Zion and Chanel. Oh, nice wall rising. One, two, the follow-up here. Going the other in way. The These back. guys like to switch positions, huh? <laughs> One of those kinds of matches. Oh, Excellent. wow, look at that big hit, and just like that, seven golden letters, the perfect. Nice aggression from C on side. This is big, you know, Europe having a, a big opportunity here to play against a lot of the international players. Players that we see throughout the entire Tekken World Tour this year, and they're doing not that bad of a job, you know. They're showing that Europe can definitely fight with some of the best of them. Oh my god! Wow. And a combo follow-up here. Chanel with the conversion here. Is it going to be enough to kill? No, not yet. Close with the low poke. That's, that's really cool. Alright, tied up on rounds here. And just like that, when he giveth, he taketh away. Oh, oh, big tiger, big. uppercut, but no tiger for you. Follow up gets him, pushes towards the wall as well. That's going to be the follow up. This time going for the mid. See, you know, he's been going for that yeah. low so much. Finally, the mid was able to hit it. That's such a, an amazing tracking move as well. You know, the, the Europeans, they shouldn't be threatened if you play against the Korean, but as you can see... Oh, what a really sidestep! Well. Wow. Beat out the option there from the fly stance. And look at that, Chanel is on fire right now. One round away from sending Sion to the loser's bracket. And you know it's real when the girl's willing to take her head off to fight you. That's how you know it's real. <laughs> oh, uh, big Tiger up because down forward to Lance gets the follow-up. He's going to go for the wall carry here, the extended combo. Not able to get it here. Nope. A bit unfortunate as well. 
He opted. He sacrificed a bit of the damage there. He's one plus two got whiff, but he still got the one oh, two. Oh, nice. While standing one two there. Yeah. No duck. Oh, oh, I can't what? believe that How missed! That the kimono, it has magical powers! <laughs> you got nice that. Oh, oh, look at that. Two rounds of the peace. Rage drive. Oh, and Sion staying alive here. Chanel's gonna have to focus if he wants to end it here. But look at the... Oh my that gosh, thing. they're again switching positions. I don't like what I'm seeing. That's like the I don't think my heart can handle this. No, it doesn't. Alright, nice back one. Oh, and again, it. you guys Stay quit that. Stop it. Spin a Rooney. That's follow like the third time they've happened. But he has rage now. He has mm -hmm. access to more damage, but yeah. he has a sliver left and uh, not enough. Just ends it with a four. Yeah. That was a very, very quick mid attack there yeah. to close it out. And Chanel, of course, moving on. They shake hands. But Sion will be now living in the loser's bracket. Mm -hmm. Chanel was just a bit overwhelming. You know, it was overwhelming. Yeah. The Kazumi player, he didn't know what to do at most of the times. Tried to go in with the down for one, but some, you know, it was weird. Yeah, it definitely didn't work out in his favor, but again, he's going to live to fight another day. All the matches that you've been seeing so far throughout the tournament has been on the winner's side. So every one of these players still in the tournament, this is going to be the last match on our winner's side. We're going to have first on esports, Rangchu, and he's going to be going wow. up against District G's Asset. I'm so looking forward to Rangchu, but I really want to see his bears, but he hasn't played any bears on the matches that I've seen so Maybe far. Maybe he's screen. saving it for top eight. You never know. Uh, I think he's been using a mix of characters. He's been yes. using Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu, Le yeah. Uh, Lucky Chloe. Lucky Chloe as well. So I think obviously he has a mix of characters. Mm -hmm. So we'll see who he's going to use in this particular matchup. I feel like, you know, using the panda pick, obviously a lot of people know panda is not the best character on paper, mm -hmm. but his panda in particular has a lot of tricks and I probably doesn't want to reveal it too early. No, I, I, I mean, a I lot of people that. have I already seen it. Even in the Korean event where he used panda most of the time, yeah. a lot of people saw it. I know because of the Korean event, he also uses Kazumi as well. I feel like, you know, obviously everyone has a Kazumi. Pocket Kazumi. Yeah. Everyone has one. He also it, but Shaheen. is it a front pocket Kazumi or a back pocket Kazumi? That's what I want to know. And what's the difference? Uh, if it's front pocket Kazumi, it's a lot more dangerous. <laughs> well, we'll see who's going to pick. Maybe Lucky Chloe, maybe Ling, maybe Bears, hopefully. Yeah. But his opponent, District G Asim, one of the strongest players. Well, who do you think he's going to use? I mean, he uses Dragonov, he can use Akuma as well. Mm -hmm. There's a number of characters that he can use in tournament play. Well, I think he's going to go with Dragonov because uh, that's, his, that's his main right now. I, I feel like, okay, see, this is such a huge thing that I think it really affects. So local scenes obviously used to a lot of characters. I think this kind of affected Super Akuma as well. Mm -hmm. His Akuma works so well here in Europe. Yeah. But when you fight against someone that is so used to Akuma, that's it true. makes it much more difficult. And I think this might happen as well if he uses Dragonov. Dragonov doing very well at the local and regional level. But will Dragonov be enough to fight against somebody from Korea? So used to a Dragonov of a high caliber level. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe he we'll might see. pick Azumi. But... This is an opportunity for these players to level up and really find out how to change their matchup, how to approach matchups against certain players, especially if they know the matchup. This is really what the Tekken World Tour are about. It's bringing the communities together so they can level up overall as a whole and be able to battle and, of course, find out who the best region is at the end of the year. Yeah, that's true. But I'm looking forward to this. Again, if you guys are watching, let people know. Twitch.tv slash Tekken. We're going to be playing, of course, from our top 32 to our top 16, of course, to our top 8. And then we'll find out who the winner is. And if you haven't gone on social media yet, jump on there and let Harada know that happy birthday from everyone in the Tekken community. It is his birthday, of course. How old is he getting? I have no idea. I don't want to ask him. <laughs> he's he's, he's going to tell me, don't ask me for shit. Don't ask my age. I'm not going to tell you. Just wish him a happy birthday. That's Oh, it. yeah. No. Don't get too personal. Send a telegram to the Mishima Zaibatsu. <laughs> but these players, of course, getting ready. Yeah. I think I think SMEs might choose between uh, Kazumi or Dragon. Yeah, I think, see, that th those are great picks, right? Mm -hmm. But against a Korean player that are used to those characters, it might not be as great of a pick as maybe picking a different character. Yeah. We'll see. But what I'm more curious about is who is Rangchu is going to pick? I, I don't think he is as, as concerned. I think Ranchu's going to pick a character that he thinks he's going to win with. And that's what we've seen so far today. Uh, uh, Panda is, on paper, is not going to win the matchups. But between Ling and the other characters he has in his stable, including Kazumi, he has an opportunity. And it was interesting, though. I didn't know he picked Lucky Chloe. Well, you've got matchups and you got certain play styles. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you might pick someone else that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. You know? See, it looks like the players are getting ready. Apologize for the slight delay, of course. I mean, it takes a lot to make sure that we have everything in place to make sure the event runs as smoothly as possible. Again, if you guys have been tuning in, there's been a ton of action. If you check the clips on the Twitch channel, there's been amazing moments throughout the entire weekend. You guys can probably see a lot of those moments during the replay portion of the show as well. 
It's just been back-to-back, -back, non-stop Tekken action. It's been a good-ass Tekken session overall this entire Tekken. weekend. Yeah, the entire weekend, yeah. And there's still more good-ass Tekken on the way. Yeah, you know, we're not even at top eight you know, yet, man. We're just trimming the fat. We're, we're about to get to the juicy part. Oh, the juicy juice. <laughs> so tell me, man, your, your local community as well, yes. the, where you're from, how has uh, the Tekken World Tour really affected? I mean, obviously, this is only the first Master event this year, but obviously, you guys are making plans, I'm sure, to go to more events on the Tekken World Tour. I'm sure you'll be over in Birmingham. I'm, I'm going to try to go to Birmingham. I'm, I'm going to try to go to all the events, actually. Okay, cool. Good Stomper uh, versus Fighting, the one mix in Lyon. Yep, mix, mix up, up in Lyon. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, people don't like to travel, and Tekken <laughs> World Tour... It, it forces you to travel, though. It That's forces the thing. you yeah. to travel, yeah. Uh, and, and I'm hoping to bring a lot of uh, locals to these international tournaments because there's a lot of talent that isn't represented well in the at, at the tournament. I think that goes for for everywhere. I mean, uh, luckily for at least where I'm from, in North America, a yeah. lot of the players have finally started traveling. You know, yeah. for the longest time, you know, the the community has kind of been disjointed because we've never had a consistent tour like the Tekken World Tour. It only started last year, and thanks to the help of Twitch and of course Man Namco Entertainment, we we're able to create something that kind of encouraged players to travel, encouraged players to have a more stable background. I mean, there's more sponsors coming to the scene as well, so we're in actually a much better place than we used to be. So it's nice to see, of course, that. Money makes everything go around, right? There's money behind the events. There's more sponsors investing into these players, investing into the personalities, mm -hmm. and of course, into the scene in general. So exactly. I want to see that continue, and I want to see it grow uh, year over year to see, of course, just see what we can really do on the grand stage of the Tekken scene. We should thank the Tekken World Tour for that because, you know, Tekken World Tour allowed people to go to different kinds of events and tournaments. Without them, we wouldn't have any Koreans at any of the events or like, Circuit Joey Fury from America here as well. Yeah, so of or course. Or Love Neat, Love Neat from India. Yeah, it's you nice know. to see just the variety, man. It's nice. It's actually weird to see uh, some <laughs> weird. of the players that I saw. I, I just saw you in Chicago. I just saw you in Australia. Yeah. But I see, I see these guys everywhere. But man, it's it's a good experience overall. Of course, love to see how the international Tekken scene will grow as a whole and we become, become one big happy community. But we're gonna get started with the matchup right now. It's gonna be UK versus South Korea. Who do you think is gonna take it? Oh man, I don't know. It depends on the characters they use. It looks like. Oh, okay. What? Josie? Okay. Oh, yeah. So, Asim is also uh, has Katarina. Katarina. Yeah. He also got Katarina. But this is the first time I've seen Rangchu pick Josie. Yeah, and that's going to be an interesting pick. So, we'll see how this turns out. I feel like this is going to be an interesting matchup. I think Katarina is such a smothering character. She has, obviously, an amazing tool set of moves. But Josie is another one of those characters that can play it from the defensive outset. So, we'll see how this is going to work out in the matchup. Starting in, here we go. Oh. Nice. Gets a follow-up there with the up back four. This is going to be a big test, you know, first on obviously using, uh, first on esports, Rangchu, using a ton of characters in this tournament so far, yeah. obviously has a huge arsenal, but we'll see, is this the right choice? Because, I mean, it's only two out of three. Mm -hmm. I thought, like, is it, this is also his first event outside of Asia. It might affect his uh, performance, but it doesn't, because he came out of the winners from his pools, and he's also playing really well, but not now, because he got low parried into the wall by District G. Asin. Great, great damage here. Yeah, he's doing good so far, but can't count him. Oh, my God. Oh, blue can't count him out, but he missed the combo from the Rage Drive. That's just unfortunate here. It's going to be a close first yeah. round end. Who's going to take it? Oh, with oh, the second hit, he, hit he pulled it off, and he knocked off her glasses in the process. Man, first round to Rongchu. Second round. Rongchu is never wrong. He's right you, right? Jeez. <laughs> Don't question his characters again, Will. Uh, never question them. You got amazing puns. Yeah, I tried. Do you study them? No, I just do it on the fly. Uh, I wish I had your talent. <laughs> it's not talent. It's, it's, it's a waste of time. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go back into the matchup here. Nice block. There's a punish. Oh, duck on the 4-4 four, four string. Really, uh, it's a real menace. You know, Rangchu really starting to try to open up offensively, using more of the down fours. And again, that's one of uh, Josie's most annoying pokes that she has because mm -hmm. of how safe it can be. Oh, excellent duck. Nice. Crouch Dash 3, also one of the di most dangerous tools that Josie has. Yeah, and down forward 2, in conjunction with everything else that she has, is, I think, the, the game killer right there. And when people start to move, that down forward 2 becomes a launch no matter which level of, of movement you're at. Oh, is that going to hit? What? That's not going to hit. That's not. Oh, man, and a punish there. And Rangchu is up two rounds straight now. He betted it all on the Rage Art. Yeah. I mean, if it hit, it would have ended it, but still. Yeah. Don't want to bet it on the wrong one. He put the brakes on. Nice back sway, able to cover his tracks. And just like that, just 40% off, just like, like two, three moves. Nice, Ooh, low parry. Low parry. To the wall. Get, no. Follow up here. One plus two, throw. Broken. Again. Again. 
He really wants to hit him with that. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it's just a pressure point. You know, if you're going to go for a throw and your opponent knows that, sometimes you're going to try to duck and try to get more damage. But obviously, he didn't force him to duck in that position. Yeah. But first round on the scoreboard for Asim. He's got to use more down for once. Down for once is a good, simple poke and can cancel out a lot of the aggression of Josie. Yeah, you know, down forward ones, they'll work. I mean, they'll 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 kind of whittle away over time, but, you know, down forward ones are not going to win you the matchups. No, that's true. So he's going to have to take those risks. He's going to have to go for lows. He's going to have to go for throws. Uh, cancel the crouch dash. Good dot block. And the thing is, you know, with the down forward one being as powerful as it is, it's going to force Josie to stop sidestepping. And you don't want that. You want her to move. You want her to get start moving around so she can get hit oh, by other things. Oh, and bad punish there from Rongju. Punish. But no, that's a good one there. Misses the follow-up. Didn't dash far enough. Yeah. Again, again, landing it. But misses the combo again with the follow-up. Looking really good right now. Uh-oh. He's not used to the combos and just finished with the low string. Oh. Wow. So this is a big mix. So because he picked Josie now, that gives him an opportunity to maybe switch to another character. I think he's going to pick another character. Yeah, but uh, this is going to be tough because I, I think if he picks Dragonov, Dragonov can be punished by Josie pretty hard. <gasps> what? He went to stage six. So well, he's, he's going to stick to Katarina. All right. All right. I respect it. He didn't do too bad, you know, just a matter of closing out the rounds. You just got to stay focused. Try to play your game and adapt a little bit, and then you can win a set. Koreans are really good at that. Oh, from short sets to long sets, these guys, they play a lot. So yeah. you got to make sure that you're able to close it out. That's the key here. Unfortunately, in this case, it's a short set. It's a first to two, and Asim is already down one game. Let's see if we can make a comeback with Katarina. Oh Surprisingly, we didn't see any Kazumi or character, uh, another character switch. I mean, we'll see. I mean, he's stuck with Katarina now the entire way. If oh he yeah. wants to win the set, he's going to have to do it with Katarina. But we'll see if that's the right decision. Oh, big counter hit by Josie. Rangchu going in with the combo. Doesn't drop it this time. Yeah, but he has him really close to the wall here. He's going to have to be careful because yeah. Josie can deal out some decent wall damage. He got a punish on the crouch dash trees, but not the correct one. The down for one pokes. Canceling out the aggression. Rangchu is waiting for an opening to come in. Goes in for the low poke. Yeah, Good goes for the tracking there and yeah. look the down forward four. You know, the down forward four and the transition into her stance afterwards is such an amazing tool because she has uninterruptible movement there. And not just that, it really kind of... Oh my gosh, that's going to hit. hit. That's going to hit. It. Oh, no, never mind. Um, he didn't have enough life. No. It would have hit otherwise. Fight. But man, Rangchu continuing that momentum. Yes. Maybe if he did the crouch that sweet, it might have worked. I yeah. don't know, maybe. Damage-wise, who knows, yeah? So Crouch Dash 3 probably would have come out a little bit slower, so it probably would have hit. Mm -hmm. Here we go. You see nice. a lot of the 4 2 3 there getting the low follow up here. And look at that. He's just starting to sidestep to the right. Really play annoying here in the matchup. Oh, that's guaranteed. Counter and the follow up. Oh my wow. gosh. Counter hit while standing 1 plus 2 is plus 14 on hit. So you get a guaranteed Superman yeah. punch and the follow up as well. And that's, you know, it's super dangerous, especially when she has rage, because she could do a rage drive combo from a forward 1 plus 2. Oh, I see. So it's something to always be aware of. And, you know, Josie, once she's low on life, she becomes really dangerous. Yeah. Her rage drive is uh, really good as well. Yeah, especially when you're able to combo from her. Mm -hmm. Just poking away a bit. Oh, oh that's risked a punish, it all yeah. with that hop kick. And that's the thing, there's a slight gap in between that where it always has at least, you know, like about 13 frames to get an interrupt in case he's able to extend. You can use your 12 frame Punisher to uh, do do any, to punish that. So, yeah. oh, man, that was good stuff there. And Rangchu able to hold it down and move on through the winner's bracket. Asim's going to move to the loser's side, but we're going to see him, of course, maybe a little bit later. But man, that was some great tech. And the Korean players, maybe as expected, yeah. all moving on in the bracket. Joey Fury from North America moving as well, and Love Neat as well, taking that W. So, the international players here in Europe have been doing well in the winner's side, but we have a, loser we have a full loser's bracket full of European All-Stars that are going to be battling out to kind of see where they're going to place in the event. But now, switching to the loser's bracket side, it's going to be interesting, and we're going to see how these matches are going to play out. I believe we have uh, District G's Kanan Trench coming up on stage right now, and he's going to be playing his matchup as well. I'm going to go ahead and try to preview what matches we have up next, but, I mean, what do you want to see in this matchup? What do you think is going to happen? Um, I think Kanan Trench is going to do well, but the stakes are a bit higher now. You're in loser's bracket. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If, you're, if you lose now, you're out. But this is, yeah, this is where all everything is, is, is on the line here because your tournament life is at stake. So it's going to be Poland versus the UK. We have uh, Frizen, right? Frizen, yeah. Frizen. 
He plays a Steve. Yeah. A really good Steve. Really solid Steve. You know, yeah. he was very impressive. A ability to convert on counter hits was very, very uh, awesome to see yesterday. Yeah, so we'll see how he's going to do this matchup. So Steve and uh, Yoshimitsu, probably a matchup we don't see too often. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, but you know, these kinds of tournaments make these ex exotic matchups possible. Yeah. You can't. It's not fun to always watch a tournament that's always Jack, uh, Kazumi, or Dragonoff. Oh yeah, and uh, we've had enough of that last year, I think. <laughs> Maybe I think not, not Kazumi as much, but no. Jack and Dragonoff was definitely yeah. uh, notorious. Yeah. But this season we've seen a lot of variety. A oh, lot of different great. characters, uh, this and is I great. love it. Yeah. You know? It just shows that every character is tournament fireball. You know? Tier lists are tier lists, but you play you what you want to play, and if you win with it, just go for it. It's, go a, for it's it. a testament to, you know, the the Tekken project team and you know how close uh, they pay attention to tournaments and of course competitive play overall trying to balance it not just for the the hardcore following but also for the casual fans exactly I feel like this is the most accessible Tekken has ever been yeah. I mean obviously may not have a, a robust tutorial mode or anything like that but I mean <laughs> it does have what it takes to be able to be interested at least on the viewership side and of course uh, competitively when you play it so uh, yeah Tekken 7 is just a really balanced game yeah yeah and I like it Balance, but characters still feel strong and cheap, which is which is great. <laughs> a bit of a contradiction, but yeah. Yeah. Right. Sometimes balance is strength, right? Anyways, we're gonna go right into the matchup. Kane and Trench versus Freeze, and this is loser side action. Losers get knocked out of the tournament. Yeah, top 24. Here we go. Try to get him with the back two. Unable to get there. Nice punish there from Kane and Trench. The one one. Just a simple string. Oh, he had oh, the counter, he but he didn't it. get the follow up there. I thought he might have gone for the duck. Yeah. Good the duck one there. Two. You know, Kane Twitch is so good at punishing. Nice. Oh, there's the counter hit. That's guaranteed afterwards. The mm. follow up, what's he going to do? Goes for the wall carry. Oh, he went for the. Oh, never Another mind. He's going to get one. it. He's going to oh. get it, and that's going to close out this round. Not only that, he's going to kiss the glove. Pose for the camera. <laughs> Polish crowd is loving it. That's right. They're cheering on their local boy here. Yeah. For them, Kane and Twitch is the invader. Oh, yeah. And that's great here. We're going to see a lot of, of course, diversity here from the different regions within Europe because because the loser bracket is pretty much all European players. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Okay, follow up go. here. Oh, look at the damage. 40% of life gone. The second low poke. That oh, was a bit too greedy. He was in this kind of position before, too, where he made his comeback, but not able to do it this time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, rage really hurts, especially when you're Steve and you start getting those counter hits. Yeah. Those back ones, he hit two counter hit back ones, and 60% of his life was gone. Yep. Nice. nice duck. He no ducked him. Yeah, it's very hard, you know. Sometimes you're gonna kind of, yeah. you know, buffer in the duck there. But he made it up with this. Yeah, he's gonna get the wall carry as well. The follow up. What's he gonna do here? Oh, this is wow. key. Oh, nice. Able to beat it out there. He knew something was coming up yeah. forward too. But he. What? The uh, throw. Too quick of an input there. Too quick of an input. I think he was trying to do for the duck one, but he ended up doing the left Lumpus throw. Dude. Yeah, yeah. That sucks because uh, it does happen sometimes. A little bit too excited. It happens in tournament, you know, you get stage fright, back to two, nice hit. Oh, quarter and circle forward, one unblockable, able to close it out there. And Kane Tretch one round away from going up. There's again the counter hit, gets the conversion, the follow up here, he's going to get the wall. What's he going to do with it though? What's he going to do? Massage, you know, nice goes for the wall standing one, two. Good duck oh. and launch punish. Oh, see, that's the thing, you go for the big risk at the wall there. Yeah. He scouted it out, he knew he was going to go for the down back three stomp. Didn't go for max damage. Well, oh, what is he doing? Oh, he tried to whiff punish it, but the down four two was a bit too short on range. Yeah, that was interesting to see. He went for the neutral version of the up two. Yeah. Uh oh, the ducky <laughs> rocket launcher follow up here. Kane Trench fighting out of the corner. Yeah, that's always scary to see that. Here we oh, go, hit go to sleep. Long. Good night. That might be it. Sonic Fang. No, he gets the follow up. Doesn't matter. Good night. Go to sleep. Final round. Two rounds each. Yeah, that counter hit back one. Enter Sandman. It puts him to sleep. Oh, tried to get him up, but didn't work. Oh, he could have done. Oh, the rainbow drop. Good break. But whipping a bit. He's been getting so much mileage there of the counter hit. Wow. This time getting Down a counter hit while standing two. Now going the other way. He's going to push towards the wall here. Gets the Sonic Fang follow up. What's he going to do this time? Goes for the mid. Yoshi so out of there. there. And that's a great, that's a hallmark of a great wow. player there. The ability to get away from the wall. But he didn't have enough life there. Yeah. And that was a guaranteed follow up after that uh, power crush. You know, the crowd's super, super into yeah. the matchup, cheering on their boy Friesen. I mean, what would you do? 
You know, you got the whole Polish crowd behind you. That must have given you strength. It's empowering. You know, you got to make sure you cheer for your your the, the people that you want to win. Yeah. And right now, Kane Trench is in a in a bad position, but he didn't do too bad in that matchup. So no. I believe he might be able to make it close. We'll see how this turns out. Yeah. But, but Steve, it, very common hit poke. Heavy oh, everybody's attack. favorite stage: G Corp Helipad at night. I say everybody as in nobody. <laughs> Especially but the OST. It's actually There's a really cool stage because it, it yeah. does have the two, helicopter. It has two unique walls to break and an extension from that. It's a very mm -hmm. unique shape. Round one. Yeah, that's true. But also the attack helicopter in the background. Oh yeah, man, I don't like it. He look, he's making me nervous. Get that <laughs> helicopter out of here. <laughs> okay, that's a decent punish. Better than nothing. I suppose. Oh, nice he caught blow. him out of the air, but it's not going to do too much damage. But if he gets the wall, it will. He will. Going for damage. Low. Oh, oh, man, he went for the down one that time. Oh, and the follow-up. That was guaranteed, and oh, the whip punish! That's crazy. Good wow. presence of mind there, able to whip punish the rage drive. Kaden Trench started to press more buttons. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. You know, Steve is such a compact character, it's really hard to get offensive started on him because mm -hmm. he has such a great counter hit game, and that's going to kind of deter you from doing some of your bigger moves and posts, and you're going to have to play so dry. Whoa, oh, the patience, the first person to avoid it this weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's true. At least on stream. Okay, the down problem. He did he even did this, uh, the the low flash, but it didn't work. Oh, goes for the down four two again. This time went for the duck two launch, a skyscraper, unable to get anything out of it. Right now has a sliver of life, but if he lands that counter hit back one, it could be all <laughs> over. One juicy back one. But Katie Trench is playing smart. He's playing very compact yeah. here, not taking a risk. Goes for the sweep, able to get it there. Tied up on rounds, one round apiece. Kane Trench climbing that mountain right now, trying to come back here and tie it up. Good oh, blocks. Good blocks. Went for all of it. Yeah, went for the sit stance afterwards here. Doesn't confirm there on the punish. No. Prison playing really well. Good contact, Steve, as you said. Oh, wow. Goes for the 3-1-1. One, one. Break on the 1 plus 2 throw. Good Ooh, duck. Look at it. Nice punish as well. Oh, it was a bit off axis. Yeah, he missed the second part of it. Yeah, nice. And there's the flash. And it gets the follow up with the rage drive here. He's going to push towards the wall. Oh, oh did you see that? Is that going to hit? That's going to hit. That is the most optimal punish I've seen on that setup the entire weekend. He got away with it. I think maybe he wasn't thinking that he was in rage, but of course, rage art having the armor. And just like that, Frieza one round away from saving Kane Trench to the losers, or home out of the tournament. That was so good from Frieza. That that was unexpected. I didn't know he was going to do that. Do it again. <laughs> I would like to see that as well. But here we go. Doesn't look too good for Kane and Trench. This might be his last game. It might be his last round. We'll see. Now, down forward one follow up. Okay. Starting to flow. Starting to get those hits. They're about even on life. Even on life. We got to watch out for those counter hits. Steve, counter hit machine. He's waiting for it. It makes Kane and Trench doesn't want to go in. Oh, all this is the big. He does have rage now. Just one reach rage Oh, he right. got him out of the he's air. Got him. He's still got a screw. Yeah, Going and he's going to get the wall. wall. Oh, this Break is big. The wall. He Another got it. Wall. He got it. Wow. What a conversion there from Kane and Trench. Staying alive here. Two rounds apiece. Excellent. But still not over yet. It's final round. Still match point. Force reason. Nice. Using the 2-2 two -two and the 2-3 follow-up. Side step there. one. Yeah. Okay, I agree. Oh, okay. Doesn't get the, the full damage out of it, though. No. Had potential. Still got some damage out of it. Low poke. I wonder if he's trying to bait out the flash or something. You know, he's really liberal about getting in there with his duck animation. Yeah, but Kane Trench doesn't want to go in because he's scared of the back ones. Yeah, you got to be afraid of it. I mean, that yeah. move hurts. <laughs> oh, here comes Kane Trench. He puts him into rage. One hit can do it. Oh, nice that's going to be that's a great it. punish. Oh. Kane Trench staying alive here. Tied up now. One match apiece. What a set. I mean, this is an amazing display of uh, European talent. Both of these players back and forth. Yeah. Now they're even in games. Now it makes it even more harder. Last I game. I can't believe he did that Rage Art punish on that the unblockable sick. setup. I, that was I, so cool. I thought he would get hit by the unblockable. But I thought he would too. He was just out of Rage and then he's like, you know what? I'm just going to activate Rage Art. <laughs> Which is the correct thing to do because, you know, as you said, he has armor. It would go through it if he held it longer. Yeah, I mean, the, the, what everyone was expecting is like, oh, he's just going to wait for it to stop, right? And yeah. then he'll continue the match. No. But, but the Rage Art, man, that was some uh, clutch stuff right there. All right. Anyways, we're here in our final battle for this set. One of these two players will move on in the tournament. The other one will be sent home. Fight. Here we go. Final game between these two guys. 
Got oh, that was big. Great conversion sweet. there with the 4 3 plus 4. Follow up, gets him at the wall here. What kind of mix up? Do it again. Unblockable One city? No? No. Want to see some more Yoshi shenanigans? Oh, there we two. go. Follow up here. Nice consistency on that combo. He's been able to get it twice now. Oh, Fabuki Ni. Follow up here. Gets the combo as well. Let's see what he sets up afterwards. Damage? Nope. Goes for a mix up? No, goes for the low kick. Steve with Rage. Candy Trench in a nice control here in opening round of match number three. Frisian playing a bit more cautious right now. Doesn't want to go in, doesn't want to commit too much, and does it with a low. Got He's, low barrier by Kane and Trench. Back to two. Oh, oh he misses wall. it. I don't agree with that wall carry. Why this, did he go for the This is scary now. Oh, okay. Oh. He's able to close it out with the jab. Back to two. Crowd, of course, cheering on their boy still. Frisian still in it. Goes with the 2 1 down 2. Interesting. A string that we don't normally see some from Steve. Oh, oh the, the flash, flash, but they, they trade. trade. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, you know, the flash will often trade in those situations when he's trying to duck because his moves are so quick and so advantageous. Mm -hmm. We can punish moves that aren't even punishable because it's so fast. That sounds weird. Punish moves that aren't punishable. <laughs> yeah, Yoshi only, right? Gen Yoshi only. That's, that's just Yoshi. Yoshi's story, huh? <laughs> Here we go. Rocket Launcher tries to get him at the wall. At the he gets wall. the stun. Oh, wow. and not just that, he gets additional damage. One big stun. Goes to the low. Crowd chest two. Oh, no Those duck. Ah! Oh, got hit by the second hit by that string, and the crowd is loving it. Tied up on rounds. One round apiece. They don't make it easy for us. Yeah, they're going to give us a heart attack before we get yeah. off the camera. No trophy. Uh. No. Both these players still looking for that opening here. I like mm -hmm. the rage game that we're seeing from both players. Kind of respect each other, but they're back in each other's faces now. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Just waiting for a huge counter hit moment. A huge opening can change the shift of the game. There's a lot of tools we still haven't seen in the matchup here. Opting they just not to go wild. They're, you know, they're no. playing very compact. Just small pokes, low pokes, mid pokes. Nobody wants to commit. Yeah, I think a big part of that is Candy Trench does not want to get hit oh, by a counter hit, but he's willing duck. to duck. He's willing to duck if he needs to, and look at that. He's looking to close it out here. He might be able to get it. Yes, he, he does. does. And just like that, Candy wow. Trench, from Turn. being on a sliver of being eliminated, now has an opportunity to move on in the tournament one round away. Now see if Friesen can make a comeback. I'm sure the Polish crowd wants to see their boy yeah, Friesen come do. out on top here. He has an opportunity, Ooh. big opportunity. He's going to push towards the wall. Decent amount of damage as well. A nice block uh, with punish, excuse me. Great conversion there with the combo here. Mixes it up, goes to the low. Oh, he went Side for the slidey. Set. He's in the corner right now. Goes for the power crush. No punish though. No. We switch positions. Oh, no. Oh, power crush. Interesting. Oh, that's going to be a good, good night. And final, just like that. Final round. Here we go. Goes okay. for the down forward two, tries to bait out a counter. There if you go. first you don't succeed, try and try again. Gets the wall. This is going to be big damage and a mix up. Okay. Here Katie we go. Trench this Flash. time. Oh, oh, here we go. The Follow wall. up. What's he going to do? Just oh, like that. Look Yoshi, at that. All Yoshi. that life disappeared. It all happened with that setup. He's back turned. Steve's got rage. <gasps> oh! This. Is this going to be it? It might be. Screw. What's he going to do? Rage heart. And that's oh, it. he missed it! He, he missed, missed it! it. He, he got, got up. up! He got up for no reason Stop. and he missed! Oh, oh my god! Kane and Trent Blocked. with the pop up! The rage drive! Both and of the, the players guys. got up. They thought it was wow. over. They thought it was over. Unbelievable. Unfortunate. Wow. I can't believe that happened. He missed the rage art. He, he, the wow. hit scaling from the combo was just a bit too much. And Friesen drops the combo. Kane and Trench wow. able to recover and does a rage drive to seal the deal and eliminate Frizen from the tournament. Wow, Frizen looks destroyed. How he would had you be? It. He, he had, had it. it. He had the combo. It was in the bag. Kane and Trench, the luckiest guy in the room. Holy crap. And the combat with the rage draft. The UK crowd is loving it. And the Polish crowd giving it a, a round of applause. I know this Friesen. wasn't scripted, but I want to see a replay on that when we have a chance. Holy crap. All right. All right. Real quick, we're going to go ahead and talk to Kane and Trench in a second. But, man, what a set so far. But we're going to start, of course, since we're getting a little bit deeper in the tournament, we're going to start talking to some of the players on stage uh, as they come off of their win. And, man, what an emotional victory for Kane and Trent. Yeah. That was some crazy stuff. I can't believe what we just saw. You know what? He thought he lost, too, because he got up. He started congratulating him. He was mid-clap, mid-applause uh, congratulating Frizen in the, in the match. But then he realized that it did not hit. No. And the reflexes, the young reflexes from Kane and Trench was like, you know what, I'm going to win. <laughs> I'm going to win. I'm going to 
that I'm going to take it back. That was an excellent composure. You know there. what? It was so good that I'm going to stop doing commentary and let, let uh, someone else come up on here because, man, that was some good-ass <laughs> tech. Hint, man, hint, hint. I'm hyped up. I'm going to drink like five That's Red Bulls sick. now. Wow. Uh,